last time Kansas State won in Lincoln was 1968. 35 years ago, the Wildcats shut out the Cornhuskers behind Lynn Dickey. Today, quarterback L. Roberson and running back Darren Sproles hope to end Kansas State's losing streak. Roberson, the playmaker, is a nightmare for defenses, and Sproles is the best all-around player in the Big 12. For Nebraska, their strength is defense. The black shirts are relentless with linebacker Demario Williams and free safety Josh Bullocks leading the charge. The Big 12 North is up for grabs today in Lincoln. degrees and very little wind a perfect day for football in Lincoln Nebraska Kansas State and the Cornhuskers go at it a big game in the Big 12 North welcome everybody I'm Brent Musburger this is the defining game of the season for both of these schools you know Nebraska coach Frank Solich he's never been able to escape that long shadow cast by former coaching legend Tom Osborne Frank needs a big win for Kansas State and Bill Snyder they came into the season one of the favorite to win a national championship three straight losses into that dream Snyder needs to win a game in Lincoln which he has never done if this was a poker game you would say simply both players are all in joining me now my partner Gary Danielson and uh, Gary what can we expect here today well big game, big game you got to have big play from your big guys and that'll be the quarterbacks for the first time in Bill Snyder's career he's going to have a quarterback with experience in Lincoln L Roberson must come through he's played here before there's a ball hawking defense from Nebraska he has to make big plays without bad plays for Nebraska you know they want to run the ball but Kansas State stops the run. That means Jamal Lord must come through. He's got to throw some passes, Brent, and he's got to complete them. The third member of our team is Jack Aroot. Let's go to Jack. And Brent, the verbal volleys have already started between today's two quarterbacks. It started when Jamal Lord said this outcome this year would be different because the game's being played in Lincoln. Well, L. Roberson responded by calling Lord a crazy cat and saying he better produce out on the field. And then later in the week, Jamal Lord tried to back things off a little bit. But Brent, I mean, here to tell you, these two QBs are going to go at it. Another sellout crowd. 262 straight sellouts. Let's go to New York. John, Terry, and Craig. How high are tensions running here today in Lincoln? L. Roberson, the Kansas State quarterback, getting into it immediately during the coin toss with a couple of the Corn Husker captains. Williams, number seven, one of their leading tacklers. He and Roberson jawing back and forth as the officials were trying to toss the coin. Now we go back to last year in Manhattan. K State beat up on Nebraska 49 to 13. And a big day for Roberson. He ran for 228 yards and three touchdowns. Darren Sproles added 155 yards and three more scores. Kansas State won the toss. They have deferred, which means that Roberson will watch as Jamal Lord and the Nebraska offense will go to work. So Jack Arut set the stage with the background, and now L. Roberson and several members of the Cornhuskers bring you right up to date. Some hostile feelings and the last win for Kansas State here way back in the 60s. Joe Reen, the field goal specialist for K-State, gets us underway in Lincoln. Josh Davis, the record holder in the Big 12 for kickoff returns, is run out of bounds by McGill, a starting safety on the far sideline. Now let us meet the starting quarterback for Nebraska. My name is Jamal Lord, senior quarterback, Mayo, New Jersey. And the young man from Bayonne leads the Big Red onto the field. He has scored a rushing touchdown in seven of their last nine games, noted primarily for his running. He has a new eye back today, and he'll use Corey Ross with the first carry. The principal financial group starting lineups. This offensive line now for the Cornhuskers leading the way as they average better than 241 yards a game rushing. There is Corey 
He's only 5'6", nicknamed Pork Chop because he says, I'm short and thick. And Josh Davis, we just saw him return that kickoff, and he adds to his Big 12 kickoff returning record. He had been the starting eye back, but here today, 5'6", 200 pounds because the coaches say more dash after a seven yard carry looking for the first down and he stopped short of it at the 30 yard line as Rashad Washington the strong safety comes up these are the four up front run stoppers along with the three linebackers who will be busy all day pressing that line of scrimmage Josh you will lead the nation in tackles and then the secondary you can watch as the two safeties will press closer and closer Tetwan and Washington as Washington makes the game's first tackle here's the initial third down of the contest Lord keeps it stops short Nebraska goes three and out with Buell, number seven, making his first stop of the game. Already a different look for Kansas State. Buell and Kansas State more inside, forcing that under defense to run the option for Nebraska to the strong side, and Buell is right there. Kyle Larson, one of the nation's best punters, the senior from Funk, Nebraska, and the all-everything Darren Sproles back deep for Kansas State, number 43. So Sproles ready now to touch the ball for the first time. Larson standing back close to the Huskers 15 yard line here in the opening quarter. Sails it toward the sideline and out of bounds. So they punt it away. And a beautiful punt by Larson out of bounds inside the 20 yard line. You talk about a field position weapon, as the coaches told us yesterday. Kyle Larson out of Funk, Nebraska, just nailed one out of bounds at the 17-yard line. A 53-yard punt, and the crowd reacting to that as Kyle receives high fives on that far sideline. Now it's L. Roberson, and the crowd trying to make it as difficult as possible. They empty the backfield immediately, and he drops back in the shotgun. He actually keeps the fullback as a bodyguard. First down line does a great job, incomplete on the pass. Sproles the intended target. Now let's meet the Kansas State quarterback. My name is L. Roberson, senior quarterback from Baytown, Texas. The numbers from last year in Manhattan. But this has always been a jinx ballpark as far as the Wildcats are concerned. Second down and 10 after the incompletion. Now on second down, Snyder has designed in his script the power eye and Spurs is slammed at the 18-yard line by Bingham. As we check the principal financial line up here this Kansas State offensive line big powerful they've led the way for 32 rushing touchdowns we've already met Darren Sproles a couple of times great nickname little tank he's built like a big tank when you see him on he's about five seven and Rashad Washington the block man on the punt defending team with four blocks this year there's a down and long right there Stepping away, firing to Terry for the first down at the 31-yard line. James Terry, the senior wide receiver from Homestead, Florida, makes the first down catch. One of the things you love about L. Roberson is the way he can move and throw on the run. He's very gifted being able to move in the pocket, shift, 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 and then deliver the ball. He was on fire in warm-ups. You saw him on fire at the coin toss. He did not, he barely missed a pass throwing in warm-ups. The fullback is Travis Wilson. There's a penalty flag Ille even prior to the snap. Illegal substitution for Kansas State. 12 men in the huddle. Substitution infraction on the offense. The black shirts. That's the nickname for the Nebraska D. The fellows up front, Bingham just made that stop. Williams, number seven, with eight sacks, the sack master of this Cornhusker defense, and identical twins with ten interceptions. The Bullocks 
Josh with nine of the ten, and that leads the nation playing alongside brother Daniel Bullocks. The two young men who are safeties out of Chattanooga, Tennessee. First down and 15 after the penalty for Roberson. Sproles not finding a soft middle. Tried to run behind Lucky, Lilja, and Johnson that time, and Williams along with Bingham in to make the stop now for the Black Shirts. You mentioned Bill Snyder and how he likes to use his people. If he doesn't get a lot out of Darren Sproles, and we'll watch him on the performance track all day, it's going to be tough for Kansas State to find a lot of yards. This guy must get field position and big plays for Kansas State. Second down and long. A pair of tight ends play fake. They're going to throw for the formation. Over through Terry and out of bounds. And that'll bring up the third and long for Roberson, who converted his first third down opportunity. Bill Snyder threw his clipboard down on the play. He had a touchdown type play on it and got nothing but an incomplete. You said it, Brent. He scripts those first plays. He's given them shotgun, empty. Uh, James Terry in the backfield, two tight ends. Now they're going to come out again in shotgun trips receivers. Fullback offset to the left. Trying to identify Williams, who is a down lineman as a pass rusher to the right side. So they're giving help on Williams. Roberson finds high, and K State will punt. So it'll be Jared Bright. We'll see if he can answer Kyle Larson. Bill Roberson comes over to the sideline and Bill Snyder awaits him. Snyder takes the headset off. Now conferring with his quarterback here on the near side of what Gary saw upstairs and he thought that the senior quarterback should have seen it that time. Now Josh Davis will be back to return and it looks like the Cornhuskers figure to pick up a few yards in field position. Davis did not fair catch. Pulls it back at the 35 yard line. So we'll take a break. Tensions running high. A big one from Lincoln, Nebraska. And for the first time since he became the head coach here at Nebraska, Frank Solich is not calling the Nebraska plays. Barney Cotton, who was the offensive coordinator at New Mexico State, has taken over that responsibility. He is down on the field now with Jamal Lord, his quarterback, out with the play that Coach Cotton wants run in this situation. Lord backs it up now in the shotgun. Bringing the end around, Lord leads the way with the block. Fluorin, the wide out, is run out of bounds, close to that first down marker. And you know, when you talk about Lord working with a new offensive coordinator, Gary was able to talk to him so much about what was different about it. You see the reverse plays to Flewellen. Flewellen had 10 carries against Iowa State. He was actually the leading rusher in that uh, attempt, and that game was for 78 yards. Again, another message from Cotton to Kansas State. We've got the whole package in. First down and 10 after the end of round. Lord on the keeper. Comes across the 35 to the 38-yard line. And now this is what Lord had to say to Gary. Our terminology is different. It's a lot more zone blocking from our old linemen. A lot of, they're going to step one way or the other way. I think our backs, uh, a lot more easier reads for them and for me. Well, the easier reads now have contributed to a first down inside the K-State 40-yard line. Hilkington, the motion wide out, comes back with Ross. And he's stopped in the middle by Jermaine Berry. Uh, John Saunders, are the uh, Sooners running up the score yet, my friend? <laughs> in this Taco Bell update, never, Brent, never. They wouldn't think of it. Jason White, 47 yards to Mark Clayton. It was 14-0 at that point. That was his 34th touchdown pass of the season for Jason White. That's a school record. He's added another one. And look. Baylor's very much in this game, and it's not even halftime. 24-3. <laughs> Most ridiculous charge I ever heard. 
running up the score against Texas A&M. Give me a break. Second down now. Here comes Ross. Stopped at the line of scrimmage, and there were three defenders there, led by linebacker Brian Hickman. Let's figure out who's going to win this game with the victory recipe. And one of the things that both teams must do with running quarterbacks is tackle well, both on passes and runs that quarterback could take off. The two quarterbacks are battling in the press. That doesn't mean anything. Who wins the quarterback battle in this game? And both coaching staffs know there's going to be big plays out here. How their defense responds to those big plays is what is going to be key. Three wideouts for offensive coordinator Cotton in this new look Nebraska system. Fires Pickington. Dropped it in, and there's a penalty flag on the play. Yeah, interference very clearly. Randy Jordan grabbed the receiver, Pilkington, on the hip that time, and that should have been interference. Almost Pilkington made a great catch. Automatic first down. That's one of the things Jamal Lord is doing better this year, throwing the quick game. He's got somewhat of a long delivery, and he's improving with those three-step drop passes. We go back to one thing that frequently gets overlooked when you discuss football games, and that was Kyle Larson's 50-plus yard punt. And that established a little field position when Kansas State had to punt it back. Illegal formation on the offense. Holding on the defense. The penalty's offset. Third down. Oh, the, la the other one was thrown on our side very late, right next to Bill Snyder. I wonder if Bill Snyder made that call. <laughs> I don't know what he's unhappy about. <laughs> he should be very, very happy to see that second one. Absolutely. Well, that's going to bring up a third down for Lord and the Huskers. One of the things that we sort of overlooked in discussing the flags, that was a pretty good-looking forward pass from number five that time. And he's back and straight up in trouble and hit a lineman. He hit a lineman with a pass, but I don't see any any flags. Of course, he was in the grasp, and uh, perhaps the lines were there conferring right now. There was pressure from Andrew Schull, the defensive end. And that's what Kansas State does better than anyone in the country. 41 sacks. You'll see it coming around the side right here. Schull, number 98. Just takes the corner, throws away the fullback. That's an interesting type of protection. You have your fullback on a defensive end. That's why Scholl defeated him. Now let's see what Kyle Larson is working with a short field. He's standing uh, right about the midfield line. Hangs it up, Sproles, the return man's gonna see if this will go in the end zone. Tap back and in the end zone, touchback. Almost down at the one yard line, but it got away from Pippins and it was down to the end zone. Time out. The uh, recently remodeled Student Union, that's the hub, of course, of all the activities here in Lincoln on the campus. Kansas State second possession coming out from the 20 yard line for L. Roberson and Darren Sproles. Sproles will be right off to his left in this formation. Inside handoff, again follows the middle of the line, and Bingham, number 59, makes a stop. Well, we've got to clean up the uh, golf, which still hadn't finished, so let's send you to Mike Tirico. Mike Tirico with the ABC Sports Golf Team, Kiowa Island, South Carolina. 63-9 under for the South African team of Trevor Immelman and Rory Sabatini. They lead the Americans by seven. Final round of the World Golf Championships, World Cup at 1 Eastern tomorrow on ABC. Second down and eight for Kansas State. Roberson on a keeper. Williams closing in, slipped past him, picked up no more than four or five yards on it. Uh, what an athlete he is as Williams makes the stop. He really is, and uh, the reason is he's a quarterback who's an athlete, and he throws on the run both to the right and the left. So shifty, hard to get a good shot on this guy, even if you want to put him out. And as I mentioned, the only Bill Snyder quarterback ever to start twice here in Lincoln. He has experience. He's been here. He's done that. Although, here in 2001, he was 1 for 11 in that football game. Must reach the 30-yard line for a first down. Robinson's in trouble. Won't get there. 
K-State to punt again. The first man to hit him, number 59, Ryan Bingham, the senior nose tackle from Sandy, Utah. He's been having an outstanding football game. And when you talk to Bo Pelini, the new defensive coordinator, he says the most important thing is not just X's and O's against these guys. It's more passion. We must get off blocks and we must tackle. And that's exactly what Ryan Bingham is doing so far in this game. Bright, Davis will let this one bounce. Oh, that's a play. Should have come up with the fair pass. Absolutely. It would have saved upwards of 10 yards as it rolls dead finally at the 10-yard line. A 62-yard punt for Jared Bright, who has answered Kyle Larson. Brent Musburger with Gary Danielson and Jack Aroot. A big one unfolding in the Big 12 North. Kansas State and Nebraska. The winner could be taking a dead aim at the title. But there's still a pesky team from Missouri that stays in this. And here is Ross squirting to the outside, battling for the first down. And he's got almost 12 yards on that carry. Well, you named him Pork Chop because he's small and thick, but he's actually a little bit smaller in weight. He's dropped 15 pounds from last year, and he's quicker. Small, doesn't matter. He doesn't have to dunk the ball when you're a running back. You got to run the ball when you're a running back. That offensive line handles that good defensive line for Kansas State for a first round. Very shifty. That's his style. Coming off a 100-yard game against Kansas. That's what earned him a spot. Yeah, all in the, the second. Lineup. All in the second half, too. I mean, great game. Chuck Davies. And now Jamal Lord pulls it out. Deep middle. Incomplete. Just overled Flewellen just a little bit. Well, one of the two unbeatens, eh? TCU is still left. John, what's up with the Horned Frogs? Well, the Horned Frogs are putting the horns to Cincinnati. This punt is blocked by Flander Malone, and Kenny Boyd picks it up in those six yards for the touchdown. TCU, the schedule doesn't help, but right now in the number six position in the BCS, leading Cincinnati 13-7. Yeah, John, and should they make one of the uh, four BCS Bowls, what are all the critics going to say then? Did the system not work? Did they run the table and stay up? We shall see as all of that unfolds. John and the fellows in New York, of course, will have a big update at halftime as Ross again squirts forward. A very positive-looking running back today. A reminder, Monday night, 9 Eastern, here on ABC. It's the Steelers and the 49ers, the well-rested 49ers. But Tim Rattay will still be there at quarterback. Terrell Owens seems to enjoy that relationship. So we'll see how they do as the Steelers are trying to put it in another gear as they come down the stretch here to the AFC North. That's at 9 Eastern. Here, it's third and four for the Huskers. Play fake. Lord, backside hit. The completion. He nails Matt Perrion, the tight end, for the first down. And what a courageous throw as it was a backside hit. And it was coming by Scott Edmonds, number 93. Little play action pass, one-on-one -on -one coverage. Jamal Lord knew it. Really didn't feel, just felt it. Didn't see it as Incognito got beat. But when you got a tight end by Matt Harrion right there, this guy in high school ran a 10-7, 100 meters. That's a tough matchup. He played as a true freshman, and he's the real deal as a tight end. Lord's first completion of the day and three passing attempts. Coming back with the fullback. Right straight ahead, Steve Crewald. And uh, coming up on the Capital One Halftime Show, of course, uh, John, Terry, and Craig will discuss the very possibility I mentioned, TCU in a BCS game. They'll have highlights to show you what Missouri did today against Texas A&M. And uh, we get word that the final on that score <laughs> is 45 22 uh, as we put that up Missouri with the win over Texas A&M and that means that Missouri is still in the race and of course tomorrow on the uh, sports writers Mike Lupica can accuse Missouri of running up the score on Texas A&M second down now Lord 
slammed to the turf at the 43-yard uh, line by Justin Montgomery. One of the first things Marty Carton did when he came to Nebraska was change the techniques of the offensive line for Nebraska. You can see it, 731 pancake blocks. That's when an offensive lineman knocks the defensive lineman flat on the ground, okay? This year, they're not even counting them. Different style. Keep your weight back, more zone blocking. It's a little embarrassing when you have 731 pancake blocks, Brent, and you go 7-7 seven, seven record. Exactly. Uh, Gary, looking at the stats right now, Nebraska with 67 yards and K-State with 25. As Lord fires high, incomplete. Pilkington was almost there. Ball was just a touch high, didn't you think, Gary? Yeah, he had one. That's the one, the quick passing game that has always been a problem for Jamal Lord and his kind of long delivery. That's an easy slant pass. That's a first down. Remember, Pickledon almost caught the other one, the tight cat, tough catch, but that's when you have to complete. That's a that's almost a ball control pass. You got to give it back to Kansas State now. Here's our guy, Kyle Larson, his third punt here today. And, uh, what a battle, huh, between the punters? There's Sproles, number 43. Favoring the right side. The There's last Washington. Kept it away from him. And Washington, of course, as Gary just circled, he's the master. And uh, he was getting close, wasn't he? And this one, not a good punt. It'll roll dead inside the 30-yard line. And... Uh, Larson uh, with the greeting for his mom almost every game, huh, Jack? Oh, yeah, Brent. A new meaning to Kyle Larson and his relationship with his mom. In fact, the first thing that Kyle Larson does when he comes out of the locker room for warm-ups is he goes over to his mom, Mardell, hugs her, tells her he loves her. Why? Because Mardell is a cancer survivor. In fact, she didn't even tell Kyle last year that she was receiving chemotherapy. She didn't want to upset his focus for games. And that one was very special because he's a senior, so that's the last time he'll hug her here in Lincoln. Roberson with the middle wide open, Gary. He just simply took off for a first down. He couldn't believe that the middle of the line just like a, a seed party when he looked Yeah, there. and Nebraska fans have visions of Vincent Young and Brad Smith. That's what they've been. This was a pass. This was not a quarterback draw. And you watch L. Roberson. He wants to throw the ball here. Nothing there. And he says, all right, I'm the best running back on this team when I have the ball. And you can you see that shiftiness. That's it right there as much as Nebraska want to put him out you can't get a clean shot on him hard to believe but Roberson and Sproles are the top two rushers all time all time in Kansas State history and both on the field here out of the eye Sproles turn and we can see now that Pelini is trying to take Sproles away Barrett Rude jumps him as we look at the defensive playbook. And the way to take them away is for your upfront guys like Ryan Bingham right here to defeat some blocks. Come on, get on them, get off the block. That's the charge. Get on the block, get off the block, and make the tackle. When your defensive tackles are doing plays like that, that's like the NFL and why it's so tough to run, run in the NFL. And that guy learned it in the NFL. With the Green Bay Packers, he was a linebacker coach before he came here, as we have now just seen him. Dodge defensive playbook, and now Roberson pulls back. Deep middle, not complete oh. at the 21-yard line on the ricochet, and there is the young man from Homestead, Florida, James Terry. Folks, you talk about concentration. Wait until you see this ISO. Watch what happens when it's deflected. Pat Ricketts thinks he knocks it down, number 28. Terry stays with it. The ball is badly underthrown. It hit. It hits him in the shoulders, and he comes back and grabs it. That was a bad throw by L. Roberson, but he got away with it. Nobody's going to remember it. That's just a completion now. A 40-yard completion. Roberson to Terry. And now Nebraska brings up their safeties. Roberson says, so let's throw again. I deflected this time out of bounds. He is so no one to catch this on the ricochet. He's bringing a little, little heat yeah, out Absolutely. There. He is on fire. You could see it in warm-ups. You know, Brent, we saw him in Texas. He was rusty in the first half of that football game. Absolutely. They were down 17-3, to brought his team back, kind of had that fumble late in the fourth quarter that might have cost him the game, but he's ready for this football game. You know, he might be a little bit too jacked Yeah, he up. might be you know, ready. He's got to pull a spring a little bit on him. Man, that, was, that one had some mustard. <laughs> it sure did. I got Mark Pryor bringing the high heat. Here's second down and 10. 
Now the option, Roberson pitch Sproles, right side, there's an alley, Sproles, five, battles, end zone, touchdown. What? So Darren Sproles takes it on in, and it was pure desire from the 10-yard line on in. He goes 22 yards, and the folks wearing purple are celebrating in Lincoln. Toughest thing about these small running backs, where is he? Where's Darren Sproles? You're the safety. Can you find this guy? Option pitch. Oh, there he is right now. Now you have to tackle this guy. He's not a big target. He's tough if you're going to arm tackle, and he drags the last guy, T.J. Howell, into the end zone. Now Joe Ream to attempt the extra point. Seven, nothing. Darren Sproles from 22 yards. Remember, he scored three times against the Cornhuskers a year ago. Boy, Gary, it helps to have a great tight end on that side of the formation, doesn't it? If you're going to run the ball against eight-man fronts right here, you must run option, and you must get your tight end involved. You can see this Bill Snyder team as well that he gets number seven. Mario Williams right there. And watch this little guy. That's amazing, isn't it? He's got speed and amazing. power. Power. I, I was so impressed by the power <laughs> I like for the last few years. What a block you just showed by Brian Casey out of Gladstone, Missouri. He went after one of the best linebackers in the Big 12. He leveled Williams with that block. That's, Man, what a great replay. That's why all coaches nowadays love to run the option against the eight-man fronts. You can account for the eighth man with the quarterback and the option. Beautifully played. Beautifully executed. All right, Gary, how important is it to score first on the road with a crowd like this? Well, I thought it was good just Kansas State keeping in it. Now they got a seven-point lead. Well, next week, we got some entertaining games coming your way. How about the leadoff to our doubleheader? How huh? the big house? Ohio State against Michigan, the BCS spotlight game, the battle for the Big Ten and the BCS and the big cash and all that. <laughs> Meanwhile, Gary Danielson has convinced everyone we should go to Lubbock, Texas <laughs> to watch Texas Tech and Oklahoma. We wouldn't miss the Sooner Schooner can rolling, we, baby. Can we kick that game off 10 minutes before we actually start? <laughs> That's the second game, our doubleheader next week, so we got a lot of action coming your way on, uh, on ABC, the home of the BCS Championship Series and all wide up in New Orleans the night of January 4th. Small lower down on a pitch to Ross. Ross is forced out of bounds, and uh, Jack Darren spoils with uh, still another milestone. Huh? He's passed 3,000 yards now in his career. And as you said, Brent, they call him Little Tank, but it wasn't always little in front of the term tank. In fact, when he was born, he received that nickname from his dad. Why? Because he came out at 10 pounds. I guess he got smaller as he got older. <laughs> right, that was a big tank back in those days. He probably barreled out at 10 pounds, too, didn't he? <laughs> Second down and short now is that power eye look and. Uh, Ross steps through that hole. Gary, I don't know about you, but uh, number 22 here for Nebraska has been impressive for me in the uh, early going. He's got 41 yards already. Yeah, he hasn't sprung the big one yet, and that's exactly the scout report that Frank Solich gave us. He said instead of getting those two three-yard runs, he gets a six, eight-yard run. His longest run of the year is just 13 yards. Let's see if they can spring one. That's the difference from when Nebraska had those great eye backs, Ahmad Green and those guys. No big plays from the tailback position. A couple of wide outs over to the right. There's Ross. Long run today, 12 yards. Now set that fullback to the other side. Lord's going to pull out. Incomplete. Coming down the sideline was Brian Hickman, number 18, the linebacker, and he got a mid on it and uh, deflected. I guess the one thing that the experts say about this Nebraska offense and team, uh, and I would certainly agree, is that if they fall behind, it's trouble for Cotton and the Cornhuskers because they do not have that passing game to get you right back in a game quickly. In other words, they need to kind of dictate the flow of the game. They don't want to be in a catch-up situation. Uh, today, for example, Miami was behind Syracuse early. They have that downfield passing game, and they were able to come back and beat Syracuse uh, down south. So there's a big difference with the system here as Lord keeps it on the option 
and he's short of the 40-yard line. I, I don't think uh, Richie Incognito is back in the football game. Remember, he went out early, and, and uh, I don't see him back in yet. That is their best, most talented offensive lineman, a tackle, and I don't think he's returned yet. Uh, Lord and the Huskers uh, need a third down play here. They, they need to do something positive yeah. on this third and six. Yeah, they've had him open on the slant passes. They just missed him. And he's got his favorite target, at least today, Pilkington. The wide receiver out of Fort Collins off to his right. Get a little bit closer now to the line of scrimmage. Lord going to take it off. Can he get there? I don't think he got it. He's down, I believe, at the 42, and he needed to reach almost the 44 yeah. as the first uh, quarter coming to an end here, the final seconds. That was Houchin, the defensive end, making the stop, but he's well short of it. That means Larson will punt when we come back to the second quarter. So Bruce Weinstein brings it to fourth down here as we start the uh, second quarter, and Darren Sproles and L. Roberson certainly were born to run as they have dominated the first quarter and K-State leads it by a touchdown. Kyle Larson back to punt and that'll bring Sproles back if he doesn't punt it out of bounds. Sproles fair catch it. I thought I saw a hand come up. No signal and now he takes off. Excellent. And there's going to be an argument. There is going to be an argument folks on this one. There's no signal by any official. The ball has been spotted, and there's the penalty flag. There's the penalty flag. Take a look now. Isn't there a late signal? That's, Absolutely. That's a signal, folks. Yep. And watch the Nebraska player try to jump over him to avoid the penalty. So Kansas State gets the best of all worlds here, unless they bring it back. That's a good job by the officials. Correcting the mistake. Got to, you've got to warn him in time. You've got to get the hand up, which he didn't do. And Randy Crystal and this Big 12 officiating staff all over it. They're explaining it now to Coach Snyder over on the sideline. You've got to give him enough warning that you're going to fair catch because, as Gary pointed out, the man coming down on the punting team dove to avoid him because of the late signal. Now, Bill is arguing right here, you make the calls, don't let the crowd make the call. So Bill's almost like the basketball coach. He wants the next one. Take, take another look here, Gary, from the high end zone. Oh, it's very clear. You see his right hand up. Now you'll see the guy on the right side of the screen, not sure who it is, just jump over him to avoid the penalty. And then all of a sudden, you know, oh. You know, I, I tell you, you know, there's something else comes into this in my mind. You know how my mind is. <laughs> it's not just a little cloudy. But when when the defensive player came over Sproles, he might have thought he could take off. I mean, it almost looks like he gets brushed. We'd have to ask him after the game. I remember, they called him. it an illegal uh, uh, signal. Uh, first down, here's Roberson in the... Uh, and uh, Jack, uh, what's the latest on Incognito? Well, Brent, they were worried that Richie Incognito may be out for the game. They took him into the locker room, checked him over. He has come back out, and now, as they say in the NFL, he's listed as probable. <laughs> that means we'll, we'll see that big rascal on the field probably the next series. He's talking to Coach right over there right now. And, you know, the coach doesn't pat you on the helmet like that unless you're going back. Yeah. If, if you're out for the game, the coach just turns around and walks away. But when he pats him, hey, this is good. Richie, good to see you coming back. He's a high-intensity guy. <laughs> <laughs> Second down and six. Roberson on the quarterback draw. Well, it's interesting when you look at these two teams historically. Gary, how Bill Snyder, uh, despite all of the things that he has done to resurrect this program, has never been able to come in here and win a football game. He's had some great teams, too. Oh, he has, but so has Nebraska. That's true. <laughs> but this team, I think, is one that can match up with the trouble that Nebraska's had with running quarterbacks and the way L. Roberson can Very throw and run. I think he's got a chance. Yeah, His Vince best Young. chance. Remember a couple of weeks ago, he really, uh, he really torched them. First down and 10 after that run by uh, Roberson. We checked the Roberson 
numbers. That's a huge first down coming out right there. He's, he's rushed for 27, Sproles for 29 yards. Here's Sproles again. He passes the 30. Another penalty flag. I'll tell you, Bill, Snyder, Bill Snyder's upset again. It must be a formation. Substitution infraction yep. on the offense. So Snyder wants another explanation. And uh, meanwhile, we want an explanation from John. What's going on with NC State and Florida State? And Bobby Bowden wants an explanation about what his quarterback was thinking about here. Chris Ricks throws it to his right, but right to the big fella. Alan Holloway, who weighs 285 pounds, bulls through Ricks. One more tackler, touchdown, 14-7 NC State. <laughs> and the big fellow was rumble, rumble, rumble. Uh, we get word this is what was going on. Bill Snyder was attempting to call timeout and couldn't get it. Yeah, remember, you can't save a penalty with a timeout. Even if he would have got the timeout, it still would have been a substitution penalty. First and 15. Mariah, one of the three wideouts. Roberson fires the middle, got the tight end off. Free and Brian Casey, who threw that great block to Spring Sproles for the touchdown, now comes up with a 37 yard reception from Roberson. Great job of looking off left for L. Roberson. Looks left, looks left, then trains his head down the right, and perfect touch. We've been talking about all those fastballs. Well, there was a change up, gave it right to the tight end Casey, and that was great execution. Almost like the safeties were pressed up too close that time, left the middle open, and uh, K-State probes the middle now for a couple of yards. Travis Wilson, the fullback, number 44, gets what? off the ground. So coming up later, the uh, Chevy players of the game, and Chevrolet will make a $1,000 contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. One of the things Bo Pelini said about a Bill Snyder team is every play and every formation has something that makes you think there's something else coming off it. He said, the more film I watch, the more respect I had for Bill Snyder. He certainly respects this drive so far. Second down and six. Roberson. Man, look what at a that. strong yeah. effort that was. He came across the 45-yard line. Bingham trying to bring him down and he was able to muscle very close you know to a first down you know who's been quiet for nebraska and i think that's the job of play calling is the linebackers williams rude and hollowell those guys really haven't been mentioned much in this game because of the option game the bootleg game the quarterback draws they've taken the strength of nebraska and put them off balance with play calling will be attempting to plug those gaps on this third and one. K-State with that power formation and Victor Manns there with Wilson to help out in the blocking. Forget that. They gave it to Saba. So I know Saba was the other fullback in there with Victor Mann. And they bring him out after the short yardage run and the chains are moved. Yeah, and remember where this drive started. It started on the four yard line after the bad fair catch signal by D Darren Sproles. And look at this drive. Runs, options, passes, completely off balance. L. Roberson is having the best game I've ever seen him play. Play fake. Plenty of time. The offensive line lets him throw it to the end zone. It's intercepted. Picked off by Josh Bullocks. His 10th interception of the season. 35. 41 yard line. And Bullocks, one of the identical twins, just came up with interception number 10. L. Roberson got greedy. You cannot hold the ball that long and expect to throw the ball deep. There's Bullock's right there. He's in the middle of the field the whole time. The ball is just now thrown. That's too long to throw down the middle. A free safety like Bullock's is going to eat it up, and he just does, and runs it all the way back out to the 41. L. Roberson started feeling too good about himself, and he paid the price. A 41-yard return out of the end zone for Josh Bullock, one of the Bullock twins out of Chattanooga, Tennessee. 
touch of all Lord muscles deep and a little bit short so incognito is back on the field as we see Josh Bullock said okay folks here it is this is really good this is my favorite trivia <laughs> question of the year Josh and Daniel we told you identical twins right which one is older Aha. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone, oh, they're laughing at me over that one. <laughs> so there's Daniel. Now, which one do you think is older when you look at those two? Huh? Now, do you think it's Daniel over there, number 14? <laughs> I think it's Josh. Incognito again, back on the field now. Tackle for uh, Nebraska. Two great safeties. Second down. Pork chop. First down for the Cornhuskers on the 16-yard run. And Corey Ross, Gary, had to impress you with that one. Yeah, it's like my grandmother used to make pork chops. A little bit of shake and bake to these pork chops because you can see them come out. Here comes the shake, and then there goes the bake. His longest run of the year. And that's exactly why Frank Solich made a tough decision to start Corey Ross over his senior on senior day. Couldn't give up any possessions, and I think it's the right move. Lord backed up in the gun, fakes the inside handoff, keeps it. Just short of the 40-yard line in the arms of Cedric Williams, the junior corner from West Riviera Beach, Florida. Let's check in with Jack Aroot. Well, Brent, you know the old cliche, there was no one that ever got in trouble hanging out at the library. Well, forget about the library for the Nebraska Cornhuskers. How about the bowling alley? You see, what Corey Ross decided to do this year was to put together a Nebraska Cornhuskers bowling team with his football teammates. Jamal Lord's been there, and Ross says he's the best. But I'll tell you, they're the smartest because they only bowl on Wednesday nights, bikini night at the bowling alley. <laughs> Second down and eight. Bikinis in Nebraska. Here's the option. Lord drops it. Wonderfully strung out. And that's the thing that Barney Cotton, defensive coordinator, said about Brent Bielfield's defense. They work in unison. You really don't see one guy out of position to why they're so tough on defense. This Kansas State team has a lot of experience, and they run together it's like they're all tied together up front. When you run the ball, there's not a lot of space in between the linebackers and that good defensive line. Marvin Simmons, number 55, has just checked in at linebacker for Kansas State. Very ballyhooed youngster who originally enrolled at USC, then left there. Now playing the throwback. Here's Ross. 25, 20 picks for the end zone and falls down. So the little fella was trying to turn just a little too quickly. And the pork wing chop. <laughs> What a beautiful call, though. On third down, Kansas State all over the field looking for different crossing routes. People coming this way, people coming that way. There's the middle linebacker, Simmons, right in the middle. He's got his back turned. All of a sudden, it's dropped off. And what a cutback run this is by Corey Ross. And the little guy doesn't pick up his feet. The field turf monster got him right there. So it's first down. Here's the hand again to Ross, spinning to the uh, seven-yard line. And head coach Frank Solich talked about how Ross makes a difference with his offense. Uh, he makes people miss. He's, he's great at that. He's got excellent power uh, in breaking arm tackles when he does make people miss. And, and so he can get you the extra yards. He can keep drives alive where sometimes you struggle to do that. He's the uh, leading rusher in this game, 62 yards already. Yeah. Remember, this Kansas State defense has not given up a touchdown in 13 quarters now. Lord to the six. Houchin makes the stop for the Wildcats. Bottom of the hour here, another sellout crowd. 62 consecutive sellouts in Lincoln, Nebraska. That familiar sea of red to all the folks here. Some of the best and most loyal fans in all of college football. Always a treat to come to Lincoln to watch their football team. And they're trailing it by seven, but 
They're threatening here. Ball on the six yard line. Here's a third down. They can get a first down inside the two and a half yard line. So it is third down and four for the first down. Board again back in the shot. Quarterback draw down for Nebraska. Incognito protects, but Lloyd's going to get thrown for a loss unless he unloads it. Oh, touchdown! Touchdown! Mark LaFleur! As Jamal Lord was taking a pounding, going down, he throws a touchdown pass. How about that? He was voted captain by his teammates. He's been through a lot here, following up a Heisman Trophy winner at quarterback. The media have been on him, the talk shows have been got on him, but his teammates respect him. The one word they use is perseverance, and that's what came through on that play. That was perseverance. David Dykes. And we are deadlocked. Take another look at this effort on this play. You're behind the defense now. For all the world, it looked like he was going to be sacked for a huge loss. And Thomas Houchin had him. He's a big guy there, but almost from his knees. Did he have his knees down? The floor says too late. <laughs> try law, try law, 7-7. Seven, seven. Like Bill Snyder always said, we need instant replay in college <laughs> football because upon further review, Gary Danielson saw something. The right knee is down before the ball is released. But there's no replay. There'll be no further review. It's 7-7 here, Nebraska and Kansas State. And Wildcats will have it coming out from the 20-yard line. <laughs> that famous statue they put up just outside the park here honoring the four national championship teams Nebraska's fielded Well Roberson backs out to the shotgun use sprawls picked up about four yards and here's our Pacific life game summary and we've had some moments like Sproles pulling and tugging and scoring and then Josh Bullock his 10th interception of the season and then it was Jamal Lord putting in the hands of Ross and the controversial touchdown pass that counted 7-7 and it'll be second down and six yards needed here Roberson handed it off and the fullback moves the chains that time, Travis Wilson. It's exactly the changeup that Kansas State needed. Run the fullback, Travis Wilson, usually when he's in the game, he's either blocking in eye formation or pass protecting in one back. If one back and it sprawls, they run it. But one back and just the fullback, like he is right now, if that guy's right there, it's usually a pass. On first down. Fires a strike complete. Well, a short time ago, the Aflac trivia question. Josh and Daniel Bullocks, identical twins. Now, which one is older? Well, we'll let Josh answer the question for you. The correct answer, my brother Daniel was born a minute and two seconds before I was. <laughs> now, if you knew the answer, your last name is Bullocks. <laughs> Mr. or Mrs. There's a late pitch now. Sproles jitterbugging. And he's got the first down for Kansas State. They'll move the chains out to the 42-yard line. And Brandon Teamer making the stop. Well, Vincent Young ran for 141 first-half yards against this uh, black shirt Nebraska defense. And you can see that Kansas State is trying to duplicate that game. It hasn't been really been stopped offensively except for mistakes. Paul Robinson made a bad one. They got 186 yards here. Roberson did not fool Williams. Williams stayed right with him on the fake and slams him down at the 44-yard line. The receiver busted, Brent. There was no pitch man on the play. That's why L. Roberson went right to the wide receiver and said, where do I block? Where do I pitch it? You can't run this play without the wide receiver. Watch, you're going to run the fullback inside, but there's going to be no pitch man. Come out, who do I pitch to? Oh, thanks. I just get to get hit. <laughs> 
a youngster might have thrown it into the middle of nowhere and turned it over, Gary. Absolutely. I've seen that happen with, uh, with I've players done. when they don't have. You probably did. I've done that. Absolutely have done that. Yeah. Correct. Second down. Roberson stands tall, fires a strike. And it is complete at the 43-yard line. Antoine Polite, his first catch of the game. Well, the biggest names of music on the biggest music show of the year, the American Music Awards, hosted by Jimmy Kimmel. This year, Bigger is Better, so watch it tomorrow night at 8, 7 Central, only right here on ABC. To bring the chains out, I think, and, uh, and measure. That give me a chance to look over here at the stats. Kansas State, Gary, with a... 195 yep. uh, yards of offense in Nebraska with 148. Roberson five of ten throwing and Lord three of eight. Lord has the touchdown pass. Roberson has the one interception in the game and time of possession pretty even in yeah. this game. Nebraska at 12:51 and K State 12:08. Nebraska must be very careful right here. Second and inches past the 50-yard line. You really have two more shots to make a first down. Might Kansas State try to get a cheap touchdown here? Here's your third down. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> he's looking for the long sneak there. I'll cover you good. Oh, boy. <laughs> well, here's our uh, singular poll question. We'll see what Gary thinks about this one. Uh, which team has been the most disappointing this year, Gary? Uh, Auburn, Arizona State, Notre Dame, Penn State, or Texas A&M? Close your eyes. But you know what? Cross Penn State off. Joe Paul won a big one. Too. Really? I know it was Indiana, but he had a big one. Well, okay. it was, where's F? All of the above. Okay, yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's true. You certainly could make that argument. First down and 10 down. Roberson on a fake. Line of scrimmage is clean. And a great penalty fly, but a great catch nevertheless. Oh, boy. Was that intercepted or caught? Well, I'm I thought he had it, and then it was taken away is what it looked yeah, like I think to you're me. Right. I thought that uh, Rude took it away after he caught the ball, but there's a penalty flag anyway, and it's a 31-yard gain on the play, but, but we'll let the replay of the officials sort this all out for us. From up here, yep. it looked like he caught it. I think you're right. Then came the interference call. Then Rude grabbed the ball. That's, we'll a, see. that's a tough matchup for Rude. The safeties are way outside the hashes. You've got your middle linebacker on a tight end with about 30 yards pass of interference. space. Defense, the pass was caught. The penalties declined. First down. Yeah, that's uh, that's what it was. Take a look at this, uh, Gary. This Brian Casey's a very impressive tight end yeah, here today. I don't think he's ultra fast. But when you have this matchup of Rudy, look, he's got his head. The ball's coming right from the side over here, and you just stick the hand in. That's a caught ball. That's exactly what it was. You know, there's one point I want to make about this Kansas State team. They reflect very good coaching here, and I'll tell you about that in a minute. Roberson with that late pitcher comes Sproles trying to get the angle, and he's pushed out of bounds at the 10 by Rudy. And, but, Gary, they were somewhat unimpressive for us in Texas. But here today, it's a much crisper team. Uh, I think you've made the big point, of course, that Roberson is healthier. That was his first game back from the injury. But this entire operation looks to me like it reflects the coaching of that man who's done such a wonderful job yeah. at K-State. Bill Snyder said we were a C team. Now we're a B team. He said he improved yeah. his grades to B. They look like they're a B-plus team to me right now. Yeah, I, uh, this is an impressive football team. They're going to get a timeout this time, and they'll come on over to the sideline. Kansas State. Last time they won in Lincoln, 1968, folks. Timeout. Gary Danielson, Jack Aroot, welcome back. You can see how effective Kansas State has been in the red zone, Gary. They do it because they can run the option and throw. So here on second down, Roberson gets a great block, fires uh -oh. in zone, got picked off, no, incomplete. I thought for a minute that Bullock's had his second of the game. Darren Sproles cut the blitzing linebacker. It might have been the safety that time, Terrell Pippins. I'm not sure which one it was. Uh -oh. But that flashed out the quarterback, L. Roberson, and he got up holding that left wrist. That's the one that hurt him before, trying to go to the middle, and that should have been intercepted. You know, Bullock's had it, and his teammate, yes. I think, jarred it out. Watch it. Let's see if L. Roberson gets thrown on the left wrist. Oh, it happened way late and kind of fell on his left wrist. That's the one that caused him to miss over almost three games. Now we've got to keep an eye on that wrist now because that did not look like that hard a hit, but there was obvious pain there. On third down, Roberson zips one too high for Terry, and it's field goal time coming up for Kansas State. Well, that was great coverage by 
by Nebraska. Kansas State crossed their tight end. Nebraska State's very sound. They didn't bite on anything. You see out here at the outside, they're gonna come across. The corner stays there. Four across the board. That's an NFL defense. They're just gonna look at him, look at the quarterback, and stay sound. Cover the man and cover the guy in your zone, and that's exactly what they did. This a 27-yard attempt by junior field goal specialist Joe Ream for the lead. Left it to the right. Left it outside. Kansas State wastes a golden opportunity. And we stay deadlocked at seven in Lincoln. Okay, Wildcat fans, you can exhale. It was not the left wrist. It was just a kind of his left elbow, as you watch, late at the play, kind of holds that left elbow. And Brent, if you're an option quarterback, everything hurts, including your left elbow. <laughs> yeah, exactly. First down, and Lord pulls it back out off the fake, and now he'll take off and nothing but daylight. Gets a first down out at the 37-yard line. That's a 17-yard run for him, and Lord now has rushed for 44 yards. Randy Jordan, I think it's right here, makes a great play on it right now. Coming back, he reads it and catches up to Pilkington. That's what takes Lord off the throw, and that's what forces the run. A good run, but it could have been a lot bigger play. Let's see, Nebraska with 327 to work with, and all three of their timeouts here. Deadlocked at seven. Come back with Ross. He's down to the 40-yard line. And of course, coming up on the Capital One Halftime Show, John, Terry, and Greg will discuss the possibility of TCU in a BCS game, plus highlights and analysis of the day's biggest game. How about the Kansas City Chiefs for you folks up in that area watching, huh? Let's hear it for Dick Vermeil. Man, going into Cincinnati, can they make it 10 in a row? How about those guys in the East picking the Bengals to beat them out? Well, outright? There's no way. No, There's Chad, no way. Chad Johnson guaranteed it. How can they lose? <laughs> Chad Johnson. We're going to be all over him tomorrow. Now on second down, Lord rolls. Backside pressure fires deep. Incomplete. Matt Harrion had a crack at it, Gary. What a perfect throw. Matt Harrion. When he gets his stride going, you can see why he was a 10-7, 100 meters. He gains a lot of ground with each step. This is a perfect throw. You got to get your tight end to lay out on this one. This is right on the button. 50-yard play, and oh, come on, come up with it. Big center fielder, big target. Oh, can't blame anyone on that one. Can't blame anyone. That could have been a catch. It was a perfect throw. Another player who has improved, and again, this reflects good coaching, is that young man right there. Yep, he sure Number is. five is a better looking football player than the last time we had it. Short drop, sings in there to your guy, Pilkington. First down at midfield, and let's check in with Jack. Well, Brent, you're talking about how much better Jamal Lord is. The coaches say they noticed a change after the Texas loss. They said all of a sudden Jamal Lord decided to be a leader on the field, off the field, and in the huddle. They say that it's almost as if a light bulb went on, and now not only is he one of the captains, Brent, but he's one of the true leaders of this Husker squad. You know, Jack, and that's reflected out here, what we're watching. Ball spotted at the 49-yard uh, line. Stakes couldn't be higher. The winner of this game on course to wind up in Kansas City in the Big 12 championship game, depending on what happens with Missouri at Kansas State next week, and then Nebraska closes out at Colorado. Complete again, Pumpkinton. Stepping out of bounds at the first down marker, and they'll move the chains on that. And the young man is showing us a passing game. I talked with him Thursday, and I watched practice Thursday, and I was very impressed with a couple things. We know what Jamal's weaknesses are, but I like his strengths, and his strengths are he really hasn't tossed it in this year and taken all the criticism and said, fold up my tent. I saw a guy that jumped on his teammates. I saw a guy that was in, into practice. I saw a guy that threw the ball very well in practice, and it's paying off. He's only a two-year player. He's starting to come out of it. Fakes the handoff this time. Rolls to the right. Incomplete. And to follow up on what Gary said, uh, here's what he told Gary how he's changed this year. This year, I'm going to keep pressing the issue. 
I'm gonna keep fighting, I'm gonna keep scratching, I'm gonna keep clawing to get that good game. You know, you just like the spirit when you hear yeah, him say something like that. You know, one of the things that you tell a quarterback nowadays is don't try to do too much. When, when you look at this kid's background, where he had to do everything just to survive, he had a tragedy with his father, helping take care of his brother. How do you back off on the football field? Tough job. Yeah, in case you haven't heard the story, he has raised his brother while he's been a student athlete here in Nebraska. Firing and it's caught. 30-yard line and there's Herian hanging on this time and that is another first down Nebraska it's been all little bootleg play action passes but they went back to the same one and he hit Herian earlier in the game play action pass a perfect throw right in front of the corner you've got a corner covering a tight end and you can see what Herian can do with that matchup he's so big he just protected it like a rebounder in basketball and Lord has completed consecutive pass plays here he barks the signal off let me check that down they run five consecutive pass plays that's what George Hill was <laughs> attempting to tell me and I uh, blew the audible here comes Lord keeps it this time did he run for another first down it's very close I believe it's going to be spotted Nebraska, maybe a touch short Nebraska's got all three timeouts there's plenty of time yet on the 20 yard line timeout is called well, let's take a closer look at senior quarterback Jamal Lord from Bayonne, New Jersey. My name is Jamal Lord, the senior quarterback, Bayonne, New Jersey. My favorite professional sports team is any team in New York because I was born and raised in New York. My favorite actor is Al Pacino. Favorite movie is Coming to America. You can't go wrong with Coming to America. Oh, man, isn't that the <laughs> truth? You could never go wrong coming to America. And here's Jamal Lord. He's trying to come right on into the end zone here and put Nebraska ahead. Barney Cotton, the offensive coordinator, had great success at New Mexico State, where his quarterback threw for 2,000 yards, said, I became more and more impressed with this guy the more I was around him. He just doesn't back up. And, uh, yeah, you know, it's always a mixed bag. I'm not saying this is the next the Johnny Unitas here at quarterback, but he doesn't have as good a football team around him the last two years as some of those great Nebraska quarterbacks had before either. And he's hung tough. Yeah, despite got, all the criticism. You gotta give it to him. You really do. His last home game. Remember, there's a lot of people who think that he should have been switched up I back a couple years back, right? Because he's such a good runner. But as Coach Solich told us yesterday, yeah, but who would have played quarterback? <laughs> he was simply the best we had to go with at the time. Second and short for Lord. And he makes his way for the first down. And still battling close to the 15 yard line. Ouch in the defender. He can probably go up and ground the ball if he wants to and stop the clock. Or they could still use a timeout with a minute 15 to go. All right, you just call a play. With the near hash, you can get your subs in and just call a play. to call option right three wide outs though over <laughs> to his right option and here's right. option right here's ross cut off <laughs> at that pass uh -oh, penalty, maybe? Yeah, good call good no call by the officials 98 andrew show and number eight james mcgill the helmet comes off and you get a good look at the young man known as pork chop Number 22 out of Denver, 5'6", 200 pounds, and we check in down below with Jack. And, Brent, it's time for our tale of the tape collegiate-wise. I was a little bit surprised when we looked into the University of Nebraska that they only have an undergraduate enrollment of about, oh, 17,800. Most of the big-time football schools we visited, it's been more like 30 to 39,000. But how about the famous alumni? I know that you probably sit down and call Warren Buffett every once in a while, but me, I'd rather watch some old-time Johnny Carson. I'd like to own some of that Buffett stock, that Hathaway. <laughs> That's not bad stuff, but he's a loyal, loyal supporter, and he wrote a very nice letter to Frank Solich here recently and uh, encouraging the coach on the job that he has done so far at Nebraska because this young man, uh, we talk about the criticism of Lord. Well, the only person who's been criticized more is the coach himself. And, of course, how do you escape the shadow of one Tom Osborne?
and last year was a disastrous seven and seven campaign but they've come back this year the problem is they were really so down against Texas never in that ball game and then they blew on a Missouri in the fourth quarter so this game today very very important for Frank Solis. Kansas State now must realize Nebraska only has one timeout they're more likely to throw the ball into the end zone now second and nine fake by Lord Pilkington can't get free so he keeps the ball and McGill runs him out of bounds at around the 13 yard line over there good job by the Kansas State defense they did exactly that Nebraska wanted to throw the ball into the end zone with only one timeout left. Kansas State stayed with the zone, and Richard Washington, number two, the deep safety, did not allow Pilkington to even have a crease of daylight. Jerry, what about the time situation now? We got 48 seconds. Right. We've got a third down, and we got one timeout. We won. Can we afford to run the ball here? Do we throw yeah. a call timeout? I what think do I do? I think I don't give the opportunity to Jamal Lord to make a big mistake. I either run option and get a first down, or if we don't get it, we call timeout and kick the field goal. Yeah, because the clock stops if they get the first down. He'll pull back out. He'll look in zone. He'll fire out incomplete. So it'll be field goal time, and he did not make the big mistake. Absolutely. Good play. Good play by the quarterback. Good defense by Kansas State. They stayed in it, forced a field goal. Two well-coached football teams. That Kansas State defense, they do not make a lot of mistakes. You can see a cross here, tight end coming out. But Kansas State stays with their men. They don't peek in the backfield. They follow along, and good job all around. It's kicker from Spring, Texas. David Dykes, a freshman for the lead. 12 to 17 this year. 30 yarder on its way and blocked. Scooped up. Big tackle. What a huge tackle. Huge tackle. Watch the block on this play as Randy Jordan picks it up and Houchin's able to get in. You can see him being congratulated, number 94. He's in on the block. Coming right up the cut, Big Houchin gets his hand on it, number 94. And I think Kelly Houston, is that number 29 who makes the big tackle there? It is. That's a huge play. That's a touchdown saving play at the end of the uh, first half. Mm, what a great tackle. 35 seconds to go. Houchin being congratulated over there on the side. We've had a missed field goal and a blocked field goal we've had a 70 yard drive wasted and now a 68 yard drive wasted really impressed how both teams and i mentioned it in my victory recipe how both teams need to respond to adversity both defenses have held up when I, the other team drove all the way down there that's a team that believes they can win this game both teams believe it obviously now watch Hutchin on the uh on the block. The ball is put down by Houston, who recovers quickly on it. Yeah, he keeps his head down. That's exactly what you're supposed to do when you're the holder. He hears the block and reacts very quickly. Yeah, boy, did he get out of the yes, block to did. come back after him, huh? Because if he doesn't get it, and it's close to being blocked himself right here, Jordan it's a touchdown. could have gone the distance. Yep, absolutely. Defensive back with speed. Houchin with the block. Jordan, number nine, scoops it up. Now, wouldn't you think that Bill Snyder, as we take a look at some of the big plays that Snyder has orchestrated in this game, along with Solich, Sproles battling into the end zone for the first touchdown of the game. Now, Lord, the controversial one, his knee appeared to be down. Nevertheless, they get the touchdown. Then, wide right for Kansas State. Then, blocked field goal for Nebraska. Now you got to look at Take a couple of cracks here. He's got a couple of timeouts and 30. You bet. You bet. Roberson looking for daylight. He can go out of bounds. And he stays inbounds. Should run the clock. I think he should have just stepped out and lived uh, he right along now, again. Three, yeah, one, those are those decisions that, I, you know, and I agree with you. That's an obvious run out of bounds. And But uh, he's fighting. I <laughs> can't blame him for that. So why?
Why did L. Roberson decide upon Kansas State? Well, on his recruiting trip, he may have shown just the reason why. It was back in December in 1998, and the first person, the only person that he wanted to meet was K-State's quarterback, Michael Bishop. Once he roomed with Bishop during the recruiting trip, L. Roberson said, my heart was sold on Kansas State. Yeah, Michael could have winged it down the field, and Nebraska's lucky they didn't get caught with 12 men on the field. One of big old linemen just dashed off to the other side. Final 23 ticks. Safety's deep. Robinson hit on the release. What a gun. Terry up for it. No flag. No flag on the coverage by Fabian Washington. Now 16 seconds left. Boy, he does have a gun because he got hit. He could not step into that throw. He was tattooed as he let it go. One of the things about L. Roberson throughout his whole career is he's gained a lot of yards with each throw. And when you hold the ball and get big plays, you're going to get big hits. Watch him hold the ball, hold the ball, and oh, oh man, he gets it from through the middle linebacker. Excellent coverage by Washington as we watch the other end of it there too, Gary. Third down. On a first down, clock stops. Terry makes the catch at the 43-yard line. Ten seconds and still a full timeout. They only have one timeout. They must ground the ball so they have one more play. They can't use their timeout now. Get them ready, L. Just down it. Oh, wow. I'm surprised. It's going to start it moving. Down to six. Second. Picked off by Lornell McPherson as the first half comes to an end. That was poor execution. They were never in sync and it cost them a shot at a field goal. Solich and the Huskers, Snyder and the Wildcats. Go into the locker room. Frank Solich, of course. Deadlocked here with Snyder at seven. Both teams wasted field goal opportunities late in the second quarter. And K-State may have let a last second one evaporate there as time runs out, Gary. But it was an entertaining first half. And hard hitting. Both teams, both coaching staffs want their team to tackle well. Well, job one is done. Both teams are tackling well. It's a very competitive game. The quarterbacks are making mistakes, but they're also making a lot of good plays. And uh, just to set the stage for you for going to John Saunders in New York, North Carolina State is up 10 on Florida State now as we take another look at the pick. Yeah, they never really got in sync. They should have grounded the ball. Downs didn't make any difference here. And you can see a lot of confusion. Three different receivers together and then an easy interception. Wide shot. You're going to see one guy's going to go deep, one guy's going to come here, and one guy right there. It's kind of a stretch route. A lot of people think it's going to be Big Ben. You try to throw the ball. Even if it was completed, there would have been no time for the field goal. You want uh, Baylor in the 53? Yeah. Well, it's 34-3. I'll Third take him. I'll take him. <laughs> <laughs> John and the gang coming up here on ABC. Army National Guard Specialist. Well, we got a little bit more, like a second half. We're deadlocked at seven here at Nebraska and Kansas State. Battling for that Big 12 North Championship, and we take a look at the Pacific Life game summary. Turnovers, two by K-State, none for Nebraska, and look at the penalties. We only had three for 13 yards, all against K-State, and a big goose egg for Nebraska. Coaches love to see that. In a hard-hitting I mean, hard game, that's, yeah. that's good for not very many penalties. Yeah, that's right, but. the 20-yard line. And Gary, you always have something that's just a little out of whack. What is it? Here? I think it's Darren Sproles in the first half. I think Kansas State should feel good about this. It's a 7-7 game, and one of their main weapons has not got off at all. Yeah, at 22 of the 38 was that one tough touchdown run, right? I was supposed to say that, and oh, I didn't sorry. think it. Thank you very much. <laughs> I want to help you out on this deal. Well, but know? I'm going to get into the quarterbacks. And, uh, <laughs> L. Roberson has made a couple of mistakes in this football game. But remember, they were trailing Texas 7 17 to 3. Still a football game. So 
So first down here as we start the second half. Roberson fakes the handoff, keeps it for about three yards, and uh, <laughs> let's check in down below with Jack and Jack, what the coaches have to say? Well, Brett, no surprise that Coach Frank Solich said they've got to have better seam protection during field goals. No surprise that he was happy with the defense and the offense. But what surprised me, guys, is he said, you know what? We're going to do the same mix of plays and rushing and passing. But he said, Jack, we've got some new passing plays we're going to try, too. Jack, you, you need that hat. I don't know what happened to that. <laughs> Second down now. Roberson's got time. Fires the right sideline. Some offensive leaders here, Gary, in this game. Roberson grabbed his left elbow again. I'm sorry, Brent. I'm just watching the play as you look at the leaders. Well, there they are for you, partner. With, uh, Roberson, 7 of 16. Sproles, Gary told you about. James Terry, three catches, 68 yards. When he turned to throw, and a lot of people don't realize, you use the left side of your body to pull and throw when you throw. And if that elbow's bothering him, that may have affected that throw. Needing seven now. Must reach the 30-yard line for a first down. Roberson's got a man wide open, and he's got the first down. Polite, the receiver, on that play. The ball will be spotted at the 37-yard line. It's a 14-yard gain for L. Roberson. And remember, early in the uh, first half, he shook up that elbow. It's the way he's carrying his arm. Yes, exactly. This was a strike. He threw this all arm, but watch after the throw how he favors it. He gets knocked down again. That didn't cause the injury, but when he gets up, he just kind of favors it. It's kind of a dead arm there to the left. That should affect options. You can't run the option to the left with a dead arm, can you? All right. That elbow definitely, he, he flexed it, didn't yes, he? Yes, he is. You know, our folks at home could certainly see that. Here's Sproles. Williams hanging on. Brings him down at the 40-yard line. Man, that DeMario Williams is a good football player. First junior college captain in the history of Nebraska football. Come in here, played defensive end, played linebacker. He attacked the isolation play right there and made the stop. A lot of K-State fans have traveled here for this game. Another terrific group of loyal fans in the Big 12. Second down, here comes the option, coming to the left, there's the pitch to Sproles, and you know who, Mr. Number 7, Mario Williams out of Beckville, Texas. A little different look for Nebraska, and Bo Pelini told us yesterday he was going to do it for the option. There's the middle linebacker right there, right there's the middle linebacker, Williams, more in the middle so he could handle the option both directions. That's exactly what he did right there. Need eight yards. First down marker is uh, just shy of the 47-yard line. If you're wondering about Williams, he has eight tackles in this game. Looking for the first down, fires, steps for it, and Polite stepped out of bounds, didn't get the first down. He's a yard short of it. Huh. He was out of bounds on that far side, and the official right there saw him and made the spot on it. That's a mental mistake right there for Polite. You got a quarterback playing with one arm, throwing the ball to you, and you step out of bounds when you need a big first down. Jared Bright trots onto the field. Can't gamble here. Coming out from your own 46-yard line and a 7-7 tie. Don't want to give Nebraska that kind of field position. Davis is going to wave everybody off on this punt, which takes a... Kansas State bounce down inside the 15-yard line. Well, let me remind you again, next week we've got a doubleheader coming your way. Ohio State-Michigan starts it at high noon. Michigan rolling today, and the Buckeyes are in a dogfight right now. Second game, Oklahoma-Texas Tech, UCLA-USC, or a Big Ten game, or another ACC game. Maryland-NC State, ACC game. Maryland with a nice win for Coach Ralph Friedgen the other night against Virginia at home. First down, Lord on the pitch to Ross, cuts the traffic, now makes his way 
Brilliant. To the 24-yard line. Nice run. Jack O'Halloran that time, number 24, the wide receiver, comes in motion, and he gets the key block that lets Corey Ross kind of pick his way for the first down. Watch him come into the screen right there and get that block. Yes, the big block on number 94, Houchin, and that allows the tailback to move it inside and get a first down. Nice execution. From the eye with this first down play for Jamal Lord. Play fake, keeps it. He's got a man breaking wide open deep. And he overthrows him. And a wow. chance for the big play. Flewellen, the fastest man on the offense, broke free and he overthrew him. Flewellen's an interesting story. Raised over in Germany. Father was in the military. Worked out in one of those Army training camps over there. And uh, one of the coaches here on the Nebraska staff spotted him, stayed on him. And here is Isaiah Flewellen now. He's a redshirt freshman, six foot, 180, and he can flat fly as he yeah. showed on that play. 447 electric time, the fastest in Nebraska history on the field turf. Here's Lord. Faked it to the fullback, kept it for a couple of yards. It'll be third down and long. Justin Montgomery from Smith Center, Kansas, makes the defensive stop. As far as Kansas was concerned, Lord in that first half was 6 of 14 with that controversial touchdown. Corey Ross for 65 yards for Nebraska. And Matt Harry in the tight end. Two receptions for 21 yards. All against a very tough K-State defense. Oh, yeah. K-State makes you earn every yard. They are well coached. Bobby Elliott, defensive coordinator, has changed the look of this defense. There's more zone. There's more pattern. They are well, very well coordinated. Need to reach the 34 for a first down. There's a blitz coming. Lord is hit. Ball's picked off by K-State. They've got it inside the 25-yard line. It was Andrew Shaw. The big defensive end. He had a jump ball situation. Yeah, Brian Hickman, I think the linebacker, got him from behind on that play. Three step drop. You must throw the ball. There's Brian Hickman. Watch him come around the back of this play. Three step drop. Throw the ball. Throw the ball. You're not protected. Lack of experience at quarterback, and that's the big turnover that Kansas State needed their first of the game. They locked it, and Buell was in on that hit, too. Now it's first down inside the 25-yard line. Roberson fakes the inside handoff to Sproles and comes across the 20-yard line into the arms of Kevin Smith. So well defense that time by Nebraska. T.J. Hollowell was right there to stop him, but L. Roberson playing with that bad arm. I got a lot of respect for him. He has, does not want to lose here. He did a lot of talking. He said, don't compare me to that guy. And he has to finish it now, one arm or not. Second down and six. Roberson option right. Inside the 15-yard line. Just a little short, I believe of that first down. It'll be third down and short. It's going to be right. You can see now. Load option. Just follow the fullback on the play. The fullback right there in front of Sproles. Come out and follow him. Two guys outside of your end right there. Just follow him. It's a running play. They like the fullback in this situation. Travis Wilson. If they go to Sproles, he's the lead blocker. Instead, Roberson keeps it himself. A high percentage sneak. Great runner, so he's got the first down. Shot of the 10-yard line here, Gary. Yeah, we talked about it. How good they have been inside the 20-yard line. They've been on fire. Nebraska has to bow their neck right now. Well, you can see what Kansas State has done in the third quarter, and defensively, Nebraska yeah, right. has not yielded a thing. So we've got two good coaches working against each other after the intermission here, and it is first down for the Wildcats. Great opportunity here for Roberson in Kansas State. Roberson dashes in zone, touchdown. 
That was a broken, broken at the end. I mean, looked like he was going to pitch. He faked the end around with Marrera, a speed merchant, number 10, coming around behind him. And then he went off to the right, had a little daylight, and cut it back. Watch, watch the block down here. Jason Terry's going to come back and get the big block on the end. Oh, that, then once you get L ropes and one on one, he makes two Nebraska players overrun him. You must keep inside out. The first poor tackling play of the game for Nebraska. And the 11-yard touchdown run for L. Roberson. He and Sproles have scored. And Joe Reem makes it a seven-point game. <laughs> Roberson and Kansas State take the lead on the Roberson 11-yarder. Timeout. <laughs> The Chevrolet Drive summary. And the man at the wheel was L. Roberson. All 23 yards he accounted for in that scoring drive. And it was a beautifully designed play by Bill Snyder and his staff to get that touchdown. Here's Davis from the seven. At the 26 yard line. Hit by Josh Buell. Well, we saw the block. Let's look at the play. It's off a of bootleg. There's the receiver coming around the corner. And where's the option? There's the block by Terry right there to spring it now into the end zone. Actually, L. Roberson gets inside four defenders. Four Nebraska defenders overrun the play. You can't do that on option football. Looks like that block was on the Bullocks. The was it on Bullocks? Josh. I didn't know who it was. I for think sure. it was Josh. This is Ross. Lost to the 33, and uh, let's check it down below with Jack. Well, Brent, in amongst the plays that are in the Nebraska playbook is a page that is entitled Toe Dippers. It explains that a toe dipper is a guy who dips his toe in the water, and then if it's cold, he's not sure if he wants to get in there or not. And then it says in bold letters, at Nebraska, there can be no toe dippers. In this second half, there better not be any toe dippers. There were some toe dippers on that last touchdown play. Yep. Mr. Root, second down. Is short of the first down. Stuffed by the K-State defense. There's Hickman, who's been very active. The senior linebacker out of Mesquite, Texas. That's a football town. Mesquite, Texas. Bull riders, football players. Man, I think there's two Mesquite players starting on defense <laughs> for, uh, for K-State. You can't be a toe dipper and be from Mesquite. No, nah, there are no toe dippers now. <laughs> And Josh Buell, that's the other one. Sure, there's two linebackers down there from Mesquite. And here comes fake by Lord to wow. not fool wow. the Wildcats. And man, they hammered him that time, led by the Mesquite duo. Hickman and Buell bringing it on for Mesquite. The Nebraska offensive line that time did not cut off anyone. You see it backside blocking, incognito, can't pick up Buell, runs inside the block that time by Jake Anderson and gets to the play. Buell is a tackling machine. Came into the game with 86 solo tackles. He's got more solo tackles than the number two tackler has tackles in the season. Kyle Larson is fifth punt of the game. Darren Spurls, and if he fair catches, watch him put it up earlier this time. <laughs> That little controversy we want with this in the first half, a little late signal on a play. Larson, excellent punter, but uh, drives this one over Sproul's head and in to the end zone. It'll come out in the 20-yard line. A 66-yard punt. The coaches would have preferred a little shorter and out of bounds. Tie back. The gates there at the original entrance to the grounds here at the University of Nebraska. What a gorgeous day we've had for football. Unbelievable. Perfect passing day here in the Midwest. First down and 10. <laughs> Sproles went for 201 last week, his career best, as we talked about. And that was with a 70-yard run, the first play of the third quarter. No big plays. And can't, uh, excuse me, Nebraska's defense right now cannot afford to give up another touchdown. They're not a come-from-behind team. The black shirts have to keep the offense in it. Here's Roberson firing left to Terry. 
first down at the 31 yard line. Matt Ricketts, the corner with the coverage. So, L. Roberson, he's 10 of 20 passing. And he's run for 64, and he's shaken off an elbow injury. And you can see again, it is that elbow. And then he ran for the go-ahead touchdown. That's amazing. You can tell certain times when he throws, when he clicks that elbow, it bothers him. I'm sure there's a lot of Missouri players watching this game and thinking about their trip to Manhattan next week. As Polite this time stays inbounds. And how about Williams coming back for that smash at the 49-yard line? Range for the linebacker. Polite pays the price, but not before he gained 19 and a first down for Kansas State because let me go back to finish up that Missouri uh, thought. Of course, Missouri and K-State, if this score holds up, K-State wins here, they would play for the North Division title next week. Yep. In, uh, in Manhattan. That'll think. be a battle. Brad Smith's never out of a football game. That guy. Mm, good looking football player. Watched him for a time here today. Roberson. Now he pitches it. And that was their fumble. Juggled the ball. Yes, he did. It down. The linesman says down. You can see yeah, he's got his foot down. Romero yep. was down. Right there, he's got his foot down and played it. That's the same play run correctly where L. Roberson had no one to pitch to when he got hit before. The receiver right here is the guy that has to back up and be the pitch man. Watch it. See how he backs up? Ah, a little easier to run this play with a pitch man on the play. Yeah, the first, first <laughs> half, he looked back and uh, Marrero was about 20 yards out exactly. of <laughs> Exactly. I'll tell you, L. Roberson, remember when he came back, was here before in 2001, he was 1 for 11 passing. He's now 11 for 21 for over 200 yards. He's having a fine game. Options to the right. Sproles. At the first down. Out of bounds. Well, he at left, the 36-yard line. He left Barrett Rude that time, the middle linebacker, grasping for air. Rude is a very good athlete. He's lined up deeper at middle linebacker so he can make more plays tracking down those running backs. But that time, Sproles showed why that combination of quickness, shiftiness, and speed is tough to tackle. Here in the second half, the K-State offense is dominating. They now have 341 total yards of offense to 234 for Nebraska. They put 227 in the third quarter against Iowa State. Good third quarter adjustments by Kansas State. They start to march up and down the field. The black shirts badly need a stop. Sproles to the 32 yard line. And Bullocks, Josh, Josh Bullocks. Remember, there's identical twins out there, the safeties for the foreign Huskers. The two safeties are starting to get wide again, Brent, and that's going to allow that tight end to go right down the middle again, and that'll force the middle linebacker, Rude, to cover him. It's there again. Brian Casey made him pay the last time they did that, Gary. Yep. So far the second half, Kansas State with 93 yards to Nebraska's 18 to follow up on that point. Scholes is short of the first down as Ira Cooper makes a big play. Number 11 goes off now to the far side. Well, Roberson on this third down is such a dangerous player when he gets inside to about third and three, gets inside third and five. You just don't know what to do with him. He can keep it, option it, throw it. Yep. Man, multi-talented quarterback. The wide safeties again. He just pulled back. Fired for the first down. He put it in Polite's hands inside the 25-yard line. Did not hesitate. It's just so dangerous. So no fun. matter what you call over there, yep. Gary, they can go to something else. That's what a senior quarterback, an athlete, can do with you. L. Roberson's been focused in on this game ever since the Texas loss. He's been on fire. He came into this game with 17 straight quarters without throwing an interception. Thrown a couple picks. But he's thrown the fastball and the touch pass all game. Three and a half minutes in the third. K-State up seven and driving again behind L. Roberson. Standing tall, got all kinds of time with a great fake. He's to the 21-yard line. Williams again makes a stop. And, of course, time permitting, coming up on the uh, thrifty Carvino postgame report, John Terry and Craig will dissect 
the day's biggest games, and we have had some. They were trying to go to the tight end on the play action pass, and he got jammed on the play. It was there, look at the wide safeties. Okay, the tight end is right here. He gets jammed on the play, or they would have got him down the middle. Look at Roberson, please, where are you? And he had to scramble. Here's a second down. Wildcats need eight. Must reach the 14-yard line. Good protective pocket and a bad throw. Into the ground. Terry, the intended receiver, and it wasn't even close. Bullocks was defending the big play wideout for Kansas State that time. Nebraska did a nice job. They didn't put pressure on the quarterback, but of handling those crossing routes again. Very well coached. They looked everybody up and forced a bad throw. Joe Ream is loosening himself up just in case they don't make this third down. He can come on for a field goal attempt. 107-18. I'd say domination. K-State spreads the field to the left. Nebraska tries to blitz. It's picked up. They hit the wide out for a first down. They come to Davin Dennis, his first reception, and the sophomore from St. James, Louisiana, muscles for the first down across the 15. L. Roberson knew he had a gimme here. Nebraska busted in the secondary. Two guys blitzed. Only one guy was supposed to. Actually, two players for Kansas State was wide open. That was a gimme on the first down. Mental mistake by the Nebraska secondary, and Bo Pelini's given it to the secondary. On first down, the option, Roberson keeps it. Cutting him off is Williams again. He's a one-man yeah, he defensive is. game. Trevor Johnson took away the pitch on that play, too. There was nowhere to the go for, for uh, L. Roberson at the time. He's lucky if he'd have pitched it, it would have been right to big number 88. Surprised if Snyder didn't uh, call a pass play here, Gary, on his second he down and long, huh? That or quarterback draw. Well, he got the eye backs in there. They wouldn't do quarterback draw from eye backs. And he's got a basic power run formation. Yes, he does. Go back in front of Sproles. And here comes Sproles. He's short of the 10 yard line. Williams again. And now this puts him in that third down situation. So the conservative play was hoping to pop it in the middle. Didn't quite swing open like he wanted. I think the way his defense is playing right now, he wouldn't mind three points. That's uh, that's a pretty solid point observation. Rather than risk yes. an interception, because remember, Roberson with that gun has tried to force it a he couple has. times. He had the one Bullock's drop. Remember yeah. his own man yeah, knocked it out of his hand. That's a very good point. Bill might be thinking exactly along your lines. Yeah, the old quarterback, he gets one every now and then. <laughs> Watch him run a cross <laughs> double pass. The linesman's going to stop it before they get it off. <laughs> linesman's got a timeout. Been called by Kansas State. And uh, the clock was apparently running down. Brian Mobleson, our ever alert spotter, picked that up for us. So timeout, K-State. And the 14th play on this drive is coming up for K-State. Total domination by the Wildcats. Third and six, and K-State is eight of 12 on third downs here today. Roberson has time, fires, incomplete. Oh, he had him too. Threw the ball perfectly, threw the ball low. Either his guy or nobody got it. And I don't know if it was dropped or skipped or what. A nice play, but it was a nice, safe throw. You think uh, maybe L. Roberson went over there and lobbied a little bit for that play? I think so. Yep, Let me I use that right out of my mind. <laughs> Joe Reen. Now remember the last time he slid one right. He missed to the right. He was wide right. So he's 0 for 1. And the red shirt's trying to get him to do it again. This is a 27-yarder now for Reem. He pulls it left, but he slipped it through that oh time. He almost overcompensated. That's like one of Gary Daniels' drives on a dog leg left. <laughs> Backup ball on that one. <laughs> and start, usually when they start out left, they hook. That just That's what I thought. It, it slid back. I thought I was just going to shoot. I know. And there it is, coming right at you this time. Good protection. Ball starts at the left upright and just scoots it inside. Woo. Close, huh? But it's
it's a 10-point lead now for K-State. And a reminder that tonight ESPN and ESPN2 have two great college games. Uh, first at 7 Eastern on ESPN2. Heisman hopeful Larry Fitzgerald of the Pittsburgh Panthers take on West Virginia in the backyard brawl. And on ESPN at 7.45 Eastern, the LSU Tigers continue their quest for a national title as they visit Alabama. For more information, log on to ESPN.com. And gonna, here. Going to stay here in Lincoln to watch the games with me? I got my chauffeur, Bob Goodman, <laughs> ready to give me that Omaha Air Force. <laughs> <laughs> I could, hey, I got, uh, I got an appearance in Las yeah, Vegas. Let's I gotta, do that. <laughs> hey, think about this for Kansas snow. State. They've never come within seven as Bill Snyder as the coach, and he got a 10-point lead. Picked up on the big hop by Davis. Adding yards to his record, but not the best decision. He's going to the 15-yard line. And uh, let's take a closer look at K-State coach Bill Snyder. My favorite professional sports team uh, when I was growing up was a, as a youngster, Boston Celtics. My favorite actor would uh, probably be uh, Bob Hope. My favorite movie has been uh, Pinocchio. Now you, now you see, folks, that's the last time he went to movies. Bob Hope and Pinocchio. He's been working X's and O's hey, ever since then. That's what it takes to turn this program around, right? Now we know the secret to the success <laughs> of the resurgence of Kansas State. Lord keeps it. Breaks to daylight. 35. And McGill forces him out of bounds. Let's check that Randy Jordan. That was number nine. Randy Jordan forcing him out of bounds on that far side. He's beautiful with the ball when he has it, isn't he? Coming out, once he gets down there, he's got great body lead. He takes a lot of yardage with each stride, shifts the ball around. How many quarterbacks you see shift the ball around? He had Ibeck written all over him, but as uh, Frank told us, he played quarterback if he played Ibeck. Interesting to see if an NFL team gives him a shot as a, uh, a running back or a receiver. First and 10. Incomplete, and we check in with John Saunders in New York. John, Brent, the BCS Spotlight game presented by ADT Update. Purdue and Ohio State. Kyle Orton to Taylor Stubblefield, who gets it inside the 15-yard line. We go to fourth down. Field goal is blocked, and it remains a six-six tie. Buckeyes boilermaker. Ah, uh, USC just groaned in agony. They were just <laughs> pulling for that Purdueski to get it in the end zone on that pass play. They are so fearful the Buckeyes might jump past them. Lord is going to be thrown down at the 36-yard line by Josh Buell. I, I cannot believe, Gary, I, this total domination by both the offense and the defense of K-State this half. Yeah, I think, uh, remember, we talked about either Nebraska's going to have to throw the ball or this rush defense, this front seven, is going to eventually catch up in the Nebraska running game. Without being able to open up the field, those linebackers have now geared in, and they're stopping them. The final seconds tick away on the Z-Man's quarter. He was our producer. Let's give it up for the Z-Man. Nice job down there. And we'll be back after this message and a word from ABC stations. back to the fourth quarter. A 10-point outburst by K-State in the third has given them a 10-point lead. Jamal Lord, the senior quarterback, his last home game. Oh, he had a tight end Harry and wide open, and he threw a one-hopper that time, down by 10 points. And uh, So, Gary, this senior class, there's 34 seniors here. Right. They've only lost two home games since they enrolled, and they're in danger here of losing number three. Uh, they are. It's a good Kansas State team, there's no doubt. And I, and I do think Nebraska is improving from what I saw last year. But they can't make any big plays in the passing game, and it's catching up to them. Yeah, it, particularly just like that yes. last one. They had Harry and breaking wide open. They had a 25-yard gain on Right, and if you don't, a good defense will zero in on you, and that's exactly what's happened right now. As a result, Kyle Larson back to punt again. We'll check out again his hang time. Got off a boomer and Sproul says, let's go. The reverse. Here comes Lawson. Looking for a lane on the left. Down 
down to the 37 yard line. I got to give uh, <laughs> give it up here for Gary Danielson. He said, Brent, watch 82. They had it on the last punt. Yeah, they did. And it was kicked into the end zone. Remember that? This time they had it on again. And when you're trying to win your first game in, what, 1968 here in Lincoln, why not run the reverse on a punt? Beautifully executed. It is hard to believe in all the things that Snyder has accomplished in the Big 12 and when he coached even before the formation of the conference that they've never won a game here in Lincoln. But they got a chance here today with L. Roberson leading the way. He's passed for over 200 yards. Pump fake got a man going down the sideline. Got him. Touchdown, Kansas State. Terry. James Terry, the senior from Homestead, fooling them. Takes it 63 yards. And now K-State has a chokehold on the Cornhuskers. They've thrown three hitches out here during the game, coming down. Each time, the corners come closer and closer. Now it's a hitch and go. Perfect. Doesn't overthrow him, catches the ball. I thought Bullocks had a shot at him, but he pulled up on the play. And all of a sudden, two plays, a reverse and a hitch and go for a touchdown. So James Terry up over 1,000 yards. Ream tacks on the extra point, and it's 24-7. Terry is the forgotten, outstanding wide receiver in the Big 12. He is one of the best. How about that stop and go? Hello, Enzo. Here's textbook mechanics by an official watching the foot and the sideline as Terry comes extremely close with the right foot. But as you can see, the official never took his eye off his foot, and he had the best view in the house. Davis says, let's go again. And he's short of the 20-yard line. Well, U.S. Open champ Jimmy Furyk and Justin Leonard team up to represent the U.S. against teams from 23 other nations. The World Golf Championships, World Cup. Final round action tomorrow, live at 1 Eastern on ABC. So the United States team in second place going into tomorrow's final round. And now Solich and the offense have got to come up with some quick scores. That's better than our baseball team. <laughs> I can't believe what I was reading. First down and dead toss play. Here's Ross. And Ross is brought down by Houchett again. On the day, Ross has put up 83 yards. They make it 85 yards. You can see it, zero passing yards in the second half for Nebraska. I don't see, see how you move against this very experienced, quick defense, very well coached by Bobby Elliott if you can't throw the ball. A quiet, subdued crowd in Lincoln. One of the quietest gatherings I've ever experienced in a football game here. Steps away, fires high, and complete. Very interesting, Nebraska, second and long, going with two tight ends, one-man pass routes. I mean, there's really not a lot to, to throw the ball to. A lack of confidence in the passing game from, you know, maybe deservedly so, I mean, from Jamal Lord, but when you're behind 24-7, you got to let her go. The state has not won here in Lincoln since 1968. Lynn Dickey was the quarterback that day. It was a 12-0 shutout. Two tight ends. Lord. In trouble on the move. Slips free, sideline, heaves it downfield, intercepted at the 34-yard line. It is picked off by James McGill, and K-State will take over. A bootleg pass, third and long. Kansas State had no part. Look at that. Isolation bootleg pass. 
Actually, it was a pocket pass, to be fair. Runs out of the pocket because of the pr protection problems and then sells a jump ball. Now, he does have his big tight end, Heron down, the Herion down there, and says, can't my big guy get it? But ball was slightly overthrown, and it was a mistake at this point of the game that's really costing him. Travis Wilson is set behind Roberson. And Snyder wants to go to work on the clock as Roberson picks up almost 10 yards here early in the fourth quarter, and we check in down below with our Jack Aru. Well, Brent, let's see if we can put into perspective Coach Snyder's tenure at Kansas State. Let's take a look at the 11 predecessors before Coach Snyder arrived. Look at their career record compared to Coach Snyder's. And how about bowl appearances? One in 68 years, and then Coach Snyder arrives, and 10 in the last 14 years. That's because the last movie you saw was Pinocchio. That's why he's been working. <laughs> First down, Roberson again, keeping the game in his hands. He's thrown for 276 yards and run for another 81 yards here today. He has talked it a little bit earlier in the week, and he's backed it up. Talk and when, the talk and walk the walk, And baby. you know what? I, I think that says something that their team, you know, Kansas State coming into Lincoln, can you really go into a place like this if you don't believe your leader believes he can win here? That's a very good point. But also at the top of the day, Gary, I think you made the big comment. The fact that Roberson had experience yes, in Lincoln. Been he here. came in here two years ago. It was a disastrous performance. Uh, Roberson couldn't do a thing that day. And here is Spurs who has scored a touchdown. But you know, as we talk about the Big 12, and of course, the team who's everybody's number one in Oklahoma today, beating up on Baylor, next week we'll go down to Lubbock and we'll watch the big Sooner machine against Texas Tech. And then the Big 12 championship in Kansas City the night of December 6th. Now, USC is number two. They play Arizona, UCLA, Oregon State. Tough to improve your strength of schedule. LSU, folks, they can really improve their strength of schedule if they run the table. And Ohio State, Purdue today, and Michigan, the big one, next week. So those are the games remaining for the Final Four, at least the Final Four as we see it right now. Should those teams get knocked off, then it opens the door for Texas and Michigan to come barging in with two losses and an unbeaten TCU. So some great games still ahead of us down the road. Absolutely. Big game for USC today, Brent. Washington State needed to win for a quality win, and Washington State looked like they were winning big. That will help USC. Yeah, that's big. Second down. Roberson and Kansas State on the clock. Sproles is tackled. Now, let's show you the BCS standings presented by Allstate, and we will show you the point here. Clear cut number one. Lowest point total in history, 1.68. Remember, the lowest wins. Now, the differential, as far as USC sitting number two is concerned, Ohio State is not even a point and a half back. LSU with almost seven points that they need to make out. You say, what are these point totals? Well, the polls, that's one point. The seven or so computers, that's another point. Strength of schedule. Uh, you know, you need a mathematician yeah. to explain it. But let me say that with Ohio State tied at 6-6, six, six, everybody in Southern California right now is pulling is pulling for Purdue to get the job done 24 7. We've got a timeout. Well, the uh, American Institute of Architects declared Nebraska's state capitol building to be one of the modern architectural wonders of the world. That building stands 400 feet tall here in Lincoln. We're about an hour away from the Omaha airport here at the football stadium. All right. Ten and a half minutes to go. Here's Sproles. Penalty fly, and we have not seen many penalties today, have we, folks? That was a first down run by K State, but uh, but there's the flag. As a matter of fact, I don't have any for Nebraska. George, is that right? Confirmation. My well, body language says it's on. Well, how could you have blocking below the waist when the receiver was so close to the formation? It's going to be motion here. I guess is who they're going to call it on. Is the wide receiver coming? Oh, that's a that's a tough one. I guess when you come from outside the formation in motion, you're not allowed to clip or block below the waist on the end man of the line of scrimmage. You know, Brent, we asked the officials about that, and I don't remember an explanation like that. 
24-7, Snyder and the Wildcats lead it. That was a big play because that was an, a first down. Would have taken another three minutes off the clock, and it was way away from the point of attack. It had no factor on the play. Oh, Snyder can feel this one. Then we, uh, there you are. Four is all we've got against K-State. Not a single one against Nebraska. <laughs> And uh, Snyder, we are told, just uh, reminded the linesman of that fact. <laughs> Third down. Roberson fires. Touchdown, Terry. They ran the post. And Terry broke free for a 37-yarder, his second of the game. And now Kansas State can taste its first win in Lincoln since 1968. I wonder if Lynn Dickey's going to pop one open here. Absolutely. Get out the champagne. Because Fabian Washington that time was beaten by Terry. And L. Roberson just threw it on a clothesline. 40 yards right to Terry. So Joe Ream, the Wichita Junior, makes it 31-7. <laughs> Beautifully designed play here again. Inside guy is going to come out. The outside guy is going to cross. And here's the player that gets beat. Watch it. Come in. They go out. They go out. Then they cross. Watch him cross right there. Now look at all that open space right there. And the ball is delivered like a strike. Nine minutes and 55 seconds away. Tied at seven at the half, and Kansas State with 24 unanswered points here in the second half, reflecting the quality of not only the athletes but the coaching staff who put together the adjustments as they come out and dominate offensively and defensively over Nebraska. Davis coming out from his own end zone. And he is down at the 23. You know, we spoke earlier about the super fans and the great fans here at Nebraska, folks. How about Art Friesen? A season ticket holder for 60 plus years in his most memorable game back in 1923 when the Huskers beat the Irish. And he will be 102 years old next January 7th. In advance, Art, we wish you nothing but many more seasons here with your beloved Cornhuskers. What a wonderful, Absolutely. wonderful story. How many of you folks out there can say the best, best game I ever saw was back in 1923? <laughs> <laughs> okay, man, that's a wonderful story. Lord completes for a first down, 11 yards. Oh, the Buckeyes, do I hear the magic word, John Saunders? What's up in Columbus, lad? The magic word is defense, because Ohio State's defense does it again. Kyle Orton coughs up the ball on the goal line. Mike Kudla recovers it for the touchdown. No offensive touchdowns, but a 13-6 lead for the Buckeyes. Ah, who needs an offense job? Bring on those Wolverines. I'm <laughs> just kidding. That goes Lord now. Incomplete. It was uh, dropped at the 48-yard line. Uh, Gary, there's a group you really want to give high marks. I really do. I haven't talked about them enough. There's the guys right here. Tackle, guard, center, ta guard, tackle right there. All of them. Clary, Johnson, Leckie, Lilja, and Doty have not given up a sack in this game. Rover's thrown for, Roberson has thrown for over 300 yards, and Kansas State has run for close to 200 yards. What a job those guys have done. Now. Gary, two of those five are from one state. Would you like to guess the state? Obviously, it's not Kansas, or I wouldn't be asking uh, you the trivia question. Let's see. Where, where are you from? <laughs> Montana? Think about it. Montana? No, 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 no. no. <laughs> <laughs> Deflected, incomplete. Now, think about it now. They've got some great athletes. We've talked about Mesquite today. Texas. You huh? got it. Wow. Nick Leckie is from Grapevine, Texas, and Clary is from Mansfield, Texas. Two of their five offensive line starters. Well, here's something for you, Gary. Spend the night with Britney Spears and go places the camera shouldn't. Who writes this copy? <laughs> Britney Spears in the zone Monday night at 8, 7 Central and after football on the West Coast. Go places the camera shouldn't. That's shameful. <laughs> Third down. Lord, going deep and out of bounds. I, I've seen the pictures of Britney. Where else is there to go? <laughs> <laughs> ah, the line of the day. All right. 
Well, you know, Kansas State has just done it with the second half. We've talked about it all the time here. Punt for Nebraska. One thing, though, you got to take out of this game, and I do know they have a tough game to go get against Missouri. Could go either way. But I think Kansas State has a much better chance of giving Oklahoma a game in the Big 12 championship than this version of this Nebraska team. Well, here's Larson. I do want to make one follow-up to that as Sproles catches it at the 15. There's one thing you might be overlooking, and that would be Missouri has played Oklahoma pretty tough oh, yeah. with Brad Smith. Well, that's so, true. You know, and they've got a chance. And, uh, now it's time for the Pacific Life game summary. Second half touchdown. Roberson on the caper. Roberson to Terry working the sideline. The post. Terry again. Homestead, Florida speed. Taking it to the house for the Wildcats. Speaking now of that K-State game in Manhattan, now won't that be fun for K-State fans? They've won 10 in a row against Missouri. Last season at Columbia, it was 38-0 Kansas State. I dare say they're going to be a big favorite. Thirty-one seven. Well, the way I look at it, you, and you may be right. Maybe Missouri has a better shot, but Kansas State. No, I didn't mean that. I just, oh. no, I just want to make sure. Both teams. Both okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, I don't. I don't. I don't want, travel I enough mail. You know, I go to the St. Louis Airport. I don't want to, you know, see those people in there. I, I love the way this mix of this team is for Kansas State. Now, maybe it's a whole different league with Oklahoma. I'll admit that, but at least they have two weapons, a pass yeah. and a run. No, Gary, I, when you compare these two teams, I, I don't want anybody to misunderstand me. I totally agree with you that because of, I think, the quarterback, yeah. as much as yeah. anything, yeah. at least he might be able to stick in the game and Brad Smith the same way with that tremendous Oklahoma defense. Yeah, the, the challenge for both for Kansas State against Oklahoma, I, I think their offense will work decently. Uh -huh. It's can you match up with those receivers? I mean, they just come at you in waves, and I don't know, you know, there was no challenge here for the defensive secondary for Kansas State. Third down and four. And Roberson swings it out to the right. And he'll just stay in bounds and go down right at the first down marker. And uh, yeah, TJ Hollowell. <laughs> Time permitting, coming up on the Thrifty Car Rental Post Game Report. John Terry and Craig, they will uh, they'll tell you what happened in Columbus today with Ohio State leading by seven. After the defense scored for them. And how about Georgia whitewashing Auburn today? You know, poor Auburn. They had Mississippi beaten last week, and I felt so badly hey, for that pass. receiver <laughs> dropping the ball in the end zone. After he caught the screen pass to get it all the way down exactly. there, too. Yeah. You know, Georgia's a team that went through a lot of injuries. They may be playing their best football of the year right now as they come back from those injuries. Yeah, that's a good point. Right at the mark, wasn't it? Got it. There's a lot of good receivers that you mentioned in the Big 12 this year. And right now, Terry is showing James Terry that he's one of the guys that should be mentioned. I mean, Rashawn Woods, uh, Mark Clayton's had a brilliant year, and Roy Williams, of course, the freak. But James Terry has put on a show here against Nebraska. Yeah, look, if you make the change to today. Yeah. And uh, good work by Graphics. Yeah, did sure we, he jumps up there with Rashawn Woods. So Dr. Wait, Graphics was all over that one. Did we make the change for Clayton yet, though? <laughs> no, you're not supposed to say that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to. I don't want to be screamed at down there. You know what I mean? Here we go. And uh, L. Roberson. So it's a big, big day for Kansas State and its fans. And uh, Patrick Camacho out of Montreal, Canada. Big basketball down there making the stop. Jack? Brent, it wasn't always sweet times for L. Roberson at K-State. In fact, in the early days, he actually told me he thought about transferring. But when he thought that, he would dial up his grandma Mary back home, and she would say, no, you don't. You stay to finish what you started. Grandma Mary comes to a lot of the games. I had the opportunity to meet her at Texas, and believe me, when she talks, you listen. And now, Grandma Mary, Jack, didn't you tell me she doesn't watch the game? She walks down when he's got the ball and doesn't watch him? Something like that. Jack was telling me some story when we were down there. Yeah, basically, Brent, what happens is she has never seen L. Roberson play an offensive down. She'll sit in the grandstands, and as soon as the team goes on offense, she goes to the nearest exit. She hides in there until one of her daughters will come back down and say, Coast is clear, Grandmother, back on defense. Now, now do you think she was watching today, Jack, on television? Is that different? <laughs> 
than being there in person? Will she be you know watching what? We'll too? have to check with her. If they go all the way to the Big 12, maybe we'll get Grandma Mary on and find out if she did when she's watching on TV. Zachary Root brings you the next chapter of Grandma Mary. Second down, 6-12 to go. Michigan leading Northwestern, we see, 41-10. That's in the fourth quarter, so the Wolverines are ready for that showdown. And uh, Florida State trying to come back, so let's check in with John Saunders. Uh, John, how are the Seminoles doing? Well, they're doing great on offense. It's defense they're having problems with, but so is NC State. Chris Ricks, 14 yards to PK Sam, who just gets one foot down in the end zone. And they've regained the lead at 34 to 30, but again, NC State has started to march. You know, I can't believe, John, they, they're not even out of the third quarter in that game. And uh, here, Gary, we've only got 5.30 to go. I think uh, Mr. Goodrich and I will make that airplane uh, <laughs> easy. Here's Roberson, oh. and oh, it's picked off. What are they Intercepted. Doing? Man, as they went far side, and Pat Ricketts was there. And uh, what are they wow. doing? It's a crazy call. 31 to 7 in the football game right here. Throwing clear across the field. You've got a huge lead. The game's over. Just run it and get out of here. And you throw a pass. Well, I guess it might not make any difference, but uh, I wouldn't want to give the other team the ball at all. Well, let's see if Lord and Nebraska can get something going in the second half. They've been shut out. Lord breaks free. And he'll be out of bounds at the 35-yard line. Well, here's an update on the singular wireless poll. What team has been the most disappointing this year? And uh, a lot of backing for the Fighting Irish. But the last time I looked, they were beating up on BYU today. Auburn second, Penn State, Texas A&M, and uh, Arizona State. Kind of me? interesting. Yeah, that, that is. Uh, I, I would have to say Notre Dame, though, has been a bit of a disappointment to me. I thought they would improve a bit this year. Yeah, I, I can see that. Second down. Now it's third down. I guess uh, when you have a quarterback that's gone seven for 23, you don't mind giving him the ball back. Kansas State's defense has stopped the run all day. There's been a few blips, but they put pressure on the quarterback, a huge turnover in the third quarter, and then once they knew there was no passing attack, they jumped all over the option game here for Nebraska. Brett Bielma has coordinated this defense perfectly, and coaches, the Nebraska coaches have said they are so well coached. Third down. Oh, no. Going for it all. Incomplete. Wow, that could have been caught, couldn't it? It sure could have. That was a perfect throw. You got to come up with some of those. Good defense. Cedric Williams is right there. But I thought this ball could have been caught by Flewellen. Well, eh, it was a back back shoulder play. Oh, good play. play yeah, by good Williams. play by Williams. He knocked the ball loose, didn't he? Oh, he had it up on his yep, shoulder. Sure and then he did. came back on that second. Oh, what a great play by that young Remember, man. Remember, uh, Williams was the other cornerback last year on the other opposite side from uh, Newman. Newman and Newman. Is yes. a heck of a player for the Dallas Cowboys, and they've got one coming up Sunday night against New England, the uh, the former Buddies Bowl, Parcells and Belichick. <laughs> Here's your fourth down after the turnover. Still five yards to go for the Huskers. Well, go back Same play. It. Williams has got it. I don't understand that. Williams picked it off at the six yard line. So Cedric Williams with back to back plays on the corner. One he knocks free and the second one he picks off. Well, I just hope this wasn't the design to play because that's a tough throw for a quarterback to make on fourth down. Look at forced out to the sideline. No chance for a completion there. And Cedric Williams back to back plays great defense. Nice job by Cedric Williams. Time out. At halftime, we told you Darren Sproles, with only 38 total yards, needed to get going. Well, he got it to 89, but uh, L. Roberson took over the football game. And uh, when you have a hot quarterback throwing for over 300 yards, maybe you don't need your start running back. Exactly. So Roberson at K-State. We'll bring it out. Number three keeps it in his hands. 
That'll be coming up now. We'll pick our mad move of the week. All of you think about it now. What was the mad moment of this football game? Not the biggest play now, not the flashiest, but what was the real mad moment that we had here today? Okay. Here it comes, folks. The mad move of the day. Take it to the opening coin toss. And El Roberson went to the center of the field and said, all right, black shirts, let's bring it on. You've been yapping here for a year now. How are you going to get even in Lincoln? Well, I'm coming to your house, and I'm taking away a W back to Manhattan. There ain't nothing madder than coming to Lincoln and saying that, folks. That's your mad move of this week. Absolutely. Didn't back up one step, did he? I think, all. I think everybody at the sideline watched his body language, saw it, and said, I'll tell you what, we may lose the football game, but L. Roberson is ready. Scrolls. Let's take a look at the uh, Big 12 scoreboard. Here today, we already told you that Missouri heads toward that showdown with a big win over Texas A&M, Oklahoma State over Kansas, Colorado playing better down the stretch. Yeah, They'll host Nebraska. That'll be a tough game for Nebraska. And Oklahoma 41, Baylor 3. So Baylor ran up to score. <laughs> <laughs> um, hey, uh, I want to ask you a little question. We're here in Big right. 12 country, and instead of making the Nebraska fans a little bit mad, I'm going to go at Texas a little bit. Okay. You think a team that doesn't win their conference championship <laughs> should play for the national championship? You've already done that to Nebraska a couple <laughs> years ago now. Okay. <laughs> they got that opportunity. You're obviously talking about a scenario in which all four of those one loss teams lose and it comes down to a showdown between Texas and Michigan let's assume that Oklahoma runs the table right. as to who would go in and play them I don't think I'm Texas not fighting should. on that one. I don't think Texas I like go. those people in Austin I'm not <laughs> fighting on that one I like those horns down there I, I advocated a rule change that if you don't win the conference championship you can't go and they declined to do that so I said the possibility could happen again and it could well you know why they didn't do that I don't know why of money because What's wrong with Michigan oh, being in it? Well, here's the deal. Here's oh, they the wanted deal. their conference You get your conference champion, yeah. gets the well, other spot. I'll tell you this. If Kansas State or Missouri beats Oklahoma, Texas, even if they're number four, won't go. You can't have two teams go. Third down. Scrolls out to the 11-yard line. Number three here today, Gary. He was uh, certainly K-State's MVP, wasn't he? He sure was. He's been here before. He went one for 11, but he came back focused, throwing the ball, play action passes, throwing off the wrong foot, firing the Rockets in warm-ups. You could tell he had his fastball. And I think if Bill Snyder could have one decision back the whole year, it would be to play L. Roberson a bit in that Marshall game. Even if they lost the game, he needed him to get a few snaps before he went to Texas when he was so rusty. They could have beat Texas that day with this L. Roberson. Ten years from now, he's an Aflac trivia question. Name the last two quarterbacks to win games in <laughs> Kansas State in Lincoln. Lynn Dickey and L. Roberson. <laughs> Well, we want to thank the SIDs. Man, we get so much help around the country. We couldn't do it without them shipping us the stats and numbers. And here at Nebraska, nobody any better than Chris Anderson. Thanks a lot, Chris. Even makes dinner reservations, sometimes not on the right night. But, Chris, thanks for all the help. And for Kansas State, Gary Bowman, their SID. Right, standing in the Kansas State end zone. This one, aren't they? Still the flag on the plate. I have never heard 
Lincoln is quiet. Is Prior to the snap, false start, offense. Nor have I seen as many big red fans head for the exits early. This is this is really rare for me to experience this here in Lincoln. Have you ever witnessed a loss here? Yes, I did Texas. Uh, Major Applewhite really? oh, that's, had a big yep, win. Yep. Uh, I've been here when Oklahoma has won, mm. and these fans sat right down to the last snap. Mm. Ah, Purdue must be coming back. Let's check in. John, what's going on? Brent, they pulled one out of your old playbook, the old Statue of Liberty play. Kyle Orton with the big pass. Gives it to Gerard Boyd. Touchdown. Extra point good. Tied at 13 apiece. When your game is done, we'll take people out there for bonus coverage. Hey, John, can't we go now? <laughs> I'm just teasing. <laughs> We've got 353 to go here. <laughs> so, if Purdue wins that game and beats Indiana, they're co-Big Ten champs, right? If John puts it on the other monitor, yeah, I'll you'll tell watch you folks it. what's going on. Not only will he watch it, he'll do play-by-play. -play. <laughs> 353 here. Uh, the victory recipe, Gary, remember you had that at the beginning of the game? How'd that turn? Yeah, there was three things I thought might do it. M must tackle well. Both teams tackled well. But let's look. The key one obviously had to be the quarterback. The quarterback is the one that came through. 403 total yards for L. Roberson and a tough day for Jamal Lord. Seven for 25. They responded to adversity in this football game. I think they did. 7-7. Seven, seven, they had a field goal miss. Turnover in the end zone. They just kept playing and they eventually turned the corner. Penalty flag again. And Bright's running out of the back of the end zone. He steps it out. They took the safety, but there is a penalty flag. I think Nebraska was offside that time. It was a safety, and Bill is asking now for clarification. Offside, you're right, Gary. There's the uh, the preliminary down there. Now, I don't know why you'd want to go again if you're going to take a safety already. Why would you want to? Only because of the clock. That, it, by the way, is the first Nebraska penalty of this game. Coach, coach. coach, what do you want? Coach, what do you want? <laughs> Take the penalty. Come on, coach. You're cutting into the Ohio State time. <laughs> Offside. Defense. Five yards penalty. Replay, fourth down. In their school's history, the first road victory against a higher ranked opponent. 71 games. I'll tell you what's misleading about stuff like that, folks. And I'm not picking on the graphic. Kansas State came in here the favorite in this football game today. Yeah, that's true. They were the favorite in this game. Slight, but they were. And you want to kill time. So now you take the safety, and you get it to 343, and you get a little daylight, and uh, now they'll free kick it from the 20. So as they get set up to do that, let's thank, let's thank the folks around the ABC Sports, our executive producer, of course, Mike Pearl, the senior producer, Bob Toms, the coordinating producer of ABC's College Football, and the producer here of today's game, Bob Goodrich. Director, Larry Cam. Nice job down at the truck along with our TD, Monty Poling. Our associate producer, Drew Kaliski, who produced the third quarter. The associate director, Brian Fay. And our production assistants, Dr. Graphics, and the Sun Devil herself, Marla Keithler. Technical manager, Mark Towie. And the production manager here this week, Jenny McIver. Our director of production, Mark Loomis. Our stage manager up here, the Yankee himself, old WW, Wellington Wilmore. Now he provided some eats at halftime, folks. Some good old Nebraska sandwiches, and they were terrific. Mm. One of the best halftime snacks we've had. Way to go, Yankee. Frank Solich is giving a little vote of confidence in the paper today. That'll go away tomorrow. I know. That's how this thing works, doesn't it, with these major teams like this? Only as good as your last performance, and this was not a good performance, folks. Frank might want to stay away from talk radio and the newspapers next week because it's not going to be pleasant. Here's Davis from the 11. Now 
to the 39 uh, yard line. Josh Davis on the return. Bill Snyder was very upset with the officials. He felt they should have started the clock when they started the play clock after the penalty. And he was very upset with how the clock was handled after that penalty. And I heard him say to the official, I know I'm right. So that'll be an interesting one, won't it? Big 12 commissioner will hear about that. His safety was not as dramatic as Belichick's. No. But he had it in the arsenal. <laughs> All those coaches have got the safeties now. <laughs> got to have a safety in your playbook. First down at 10. Lower down to 34 yard line. Ouch it. Really tough on the Nebraska offensive line. And I know this is how Nebraska's built at this point in a little bit of a transition for Nebraska's offense. But when you're trying to play action pass block against a defensive line that has their ears pinned back coming after the quarterback, it's very difficult to give good pass protection. Boy, Cal really beating up on Washington out west today. What happened to that Washington team? Complete and uh, was going to step out of bounds, but uh, Flewellen stayed inbounds, I believe. And uh, here's today's Chevrolet players of the game. Certainly uh, no surprise as far as K-State is concerned. L. Roberson, 403 total yards. And Demorio Williams, the Nebraska linebacker, had 14 tackles, two of them for a loss. L. Roberson almost played a perfect football game. Remember he had that bad elbow? He threw one pass late over the middle to get it intercepted. He won at the end of the half, no big deal. He was trying to get something, but almost a perfect game on the road for L. Roberson. 24 unanswered points. Roberson led Kansas State to, and... Uh, well, I know who doesn't want to watch the uh, Michigan, let me know, Ohio State-Purdue game, the officials. They're just as soon finish this one off I mean, right here. They got chains and they got <laughs> flags and we've got discussions. That's close enough. Give them a first down. Let's go. We got airplanes. We got close enough. An inch. There we go. Yeah, that's their job. I'm, 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 I'm just kind of trying to be funny. <laughs> <laughs> We're laughing up here. <laughs> Actually, the crew's done a pretty good job. Yes, today. they have. As have most of the officials we've been around this year. Have you noticed? I thought the, the play they made where they actually called the penalty on Sproles was a good job of fixing a mistake while it was happening. As a matter of fact, the biggest mistake that we yeah, saw up here yeah. was the fact that Lord's knee appeared to be down on the Nebraska touchdown. Right. It was when you real, go back and think about it. In, in slow motion, it was down. You're right. Yeah, yeah. Third down and inches. There's the first down. The fumble. Fumble. Ball comes loose. Kansas State football. Yeah. Oh, that could be the bitter end of, uh, of a tough day here. Recovered by Josh Mule. I guess that inch meant something, huh? Wow. How's uh, Nebraska reload now to go play Colorado? That's got to be tough. And with an off week. That's not till Thanksgiving weekend. It's really going to test the strength, the inner strength of Jamal Lord now. Or do you play Joe Daly, next year's freshman quarterback? One game to get him ready for next year. Do you go and look at someone else for the last game? Maybe not a bad idea. Spools. And we check in with John in New York. John? Well, in the SEC, Georgia against Auburn. Jason Campbell has plenty of time, but the ball gets tipped as it's released, bounces around a couple of times into the hands of Odell Thurman, who goes 99 yards, starts to tiptoe, starts to run out of gas, but gets it into the end zone for the touchdown, 26-0. Georgia is still in that chase for some big honors this year. So Kansas State eliminating Nebraska here today. And Sproles breaks for the end zone. Oh, he's Nebraska at the angle, and they'll take him out of bounds at the six-yard line. Darren Sproles puts him over 100, and it marks the 10th straight game that Nebraska has given up 100 yards and lost to a receipt to a running back. Just bounces it out this time. Supposed to go to the left, ends up going to the outside to the right. Look at that quickness. It's going to be interesting to see what this guy does in the NFL. 
Small, choppy runners. Will he be able to play and be a factor in the NFL? You know, I don't, I don't say no to anybody anymore in the NFL. Who knows? You exactly. Know? Exactly. When that win is, you know, I mean, it was oh, you a watch he's a tackling It's machine. unbelievable. They part of that Dallas Cowboy defense. Bill Parcells with a superb defense. Newman, of course, has added to it. Williams, and uh, this is a touchdown as they go to a power back. Saba takes it on in for the score with a minute and a half to go. Boy, what could have been for Kansas State this year? You know, they lose to Marshall at home. If L. Roberson doesn't get hurt, do you think Kansas State might have made a run at the national championship? Well, they were supposed to. Yes. They were up to five yes. after their opening game win. And everybody touted them as a possible national champion this year, depending on what would happen, of course, against Oklahoma. They still, of course, could wind up playing Oklahoma if they can beat Missouri right. next week in Manhattan. They'll wrap up the Big 12 North and head on in on the night of December 6th as Ream tacks on another extra point. 38 to 9, Kansas State.